All right, good evening, everybody. If we could come to order, welcome to the September 20th meeting of the Jersey City Planning Board. And if uh, while the room fills up, if you could join me in a salute to the flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. All right, thank you, everybody. Could we have a sunshine announcement, please, Cam? Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, today is Tuesday, September 20th in the year 2022. This is a Jersey City Planning Board meeting uh, with a scheduled 5.30 p.m. start time. Um, this meeting is being held virtually as a video conference open to the public. And in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting has been given to the editor of the Jersey Journal, the Jersey City Reporter, and posted with the city clerk on September 16th and re-sunshined on September 19th. Um, this meeting was also posted on the Jersey City Division of City Planning webpage and all distribution materials made available to the board were published and available to the public. All right, thanks, Cam. Uh, could we have a roll call, please? Okay. Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Here. Commissioner, Dr. Desai. Here. Commissioner Lipsky. Here. Commissioner Cruz. Here. Commissioner Gangadin. Here. Commissioner Green. Here. Commissioner Torres. Yeah. And Chairman Langston. Here. All righty. We have eight oh, commissioners Torres? present. We have a quorum. Sorry, what was that, Dr. Desai? Torres? Did you do? Oh, oh I, did, Torres? I did call Torres. Yeah, we got Torres. It's okay. They got me. Okay, <laughs> we've got eight commissioners. We have a quorum. All right. Thank you. Uh, could we swear in the staff, please, Mike? I see Cameron, Tim, Mallory, Matt, Francisco, Tanya. Do you guys swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I see a number of adjournments. Cam, uh, do we have correspondence, or do you just want to get to adjournments? Um, we do have one correspondence, and that is that item 21 on the agenda. Um, that is address 381, Route 440 with case number P22-115. They have requested to adjourn with preservation of notice to the October 11th meeting. <clears throat> so again, that's item 21, case P22-115, address 381, Route 440. They've requested to carry with preservation of notice to October 11th. Okay, thanks, Cam. So if you, uh, if anybody from the public is here to uh, see that application tonight, that will be moved to the October 11th meeting. You will not receive any new notice on it. This is your notice. Um, and we also have three items at the top of our agenda that are uh, moving to later in the month. I'm sorry, later in October. Uh, case P22-142 is a review and discussion of the report concerning the determination of the Ocean Avenue Ward A study area. Uh, that has been moved to a date certain October 11th. Uh, we have case P22-097 is a preliminary and final major subdivision and preliminary and final major site plan with variances, uh, address being 400 to 420 Marin Boulevard. That has been moved to a date certain October 25th. And also case P22-034 is a preliminary and final major site plan for 2nd Street. And that has been carried to a date certain to be October 11th. So if we could, let's get into new business. Uh, before we call that, I do have an item that ended up a little further down the uh, agenda than it should have been. Um, so if Mr. Rebellini is out there, we will be moving you up. Uh, hopefully your team is present, uh, but I promised you second tonight and uh, 
that's all I have is my word. So I'm going to move you up to second tonight. But uh, first application up, let's call case P22-135 uh, is a, I don't have it on the agenda. Uh, Matt, I'm assuming that's a preliminary and final major site plan. Correct. Okay. And that's for 665 to 669 Grant Street. Good evening, uh, Stephen Joseph for the applicant. And actually, before we, we jump into this application, I have another application that is, is way down on the agenda that I don't believe uh, we're going to get to tonight. So 126 Baldwin, it, it's not a notice application, um, but we, we'd like to adjourn that to the next available meeting at this time as well. Okay, so that's case P22-010 is a minor site plan for 126 Baldwin. Avenue, also known as 155 to 157 Academy Street. Let's uh, carry you right now to a date certain October 11th. Okay, Council. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you. We appreciate you uh, yeah. taking care of that early rather than later. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 665669 Grand Street is a notice application. Um, Council can confirm we are in receipt of notices. This was carried from a prior agenda, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Chairman, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the preliminary and final major site plan approval sought for 665-669 Grand Street here in the city. This matter was noticed for the September 6th hearing date and was carried with the preservation of that notice to tonight's hearing date. Uh, all does appear to be in order. We're gonna mark it as A1 for the record. Okay, thank you, Council. Great. Um, so 665 and 669 Grand Street, the, these properties are located on Grand Street between State Street and Westervelt Place in the mixed use E zone of Morris Canal. The board has seen this application uh, quite a few times, twice, I believe, in, in the past. Since then, the redevelopment plan was amended um, to permit the consolidation of these two undersized lots and the creation of a curb cut along Gr Grand Street. Because of that amendment, the only relief being requested tonight is a preliminary and final major site plan approval. There are no variances. This is a completely as of right application. The proposal is to construct a new four story building. It will be mixed use with commercial on the ground floor, parking in the rear yard, and 23 dwelling units above the ground floor. Um, the applicant uh, has obtained a determination of significance from the historic officer, which allows the demolition of the existing building on the site. That is memo number DS21-091 for the record. I have two experts this evening. I, um, I'm only gonna call Ted Hammer the architect, but our traffic engineer is available for questions or if the board has, has any concerns about that as well. So let's, um, let's get Ted Hammer sworn in. I don't see him on the screen. Ted, if you're out there, if you could. Oh, okay, I see him. Great. As Theodore. <clears throat> and what was the traffic engineer? Lee Klein. Uh, Lee, Lee Klein is our traffic engineer. And. <sighs> okay, there he is. Okay, Lee and Ted have joined. Great. Um, let's get let's get Ted sworn in and have him run through the plans. I still don't see I mean, him. Yeah. I thought he got promoted. And now I don't see him anymore. Oh, he's still out there. Go back to him. All right, he's up. Uh, before we bring Mr. Hammer in, uh, Doc, I'm my apparently my dog is giving you notice that you're gonna have to take the reins for a little bit. <laughs> I apologize. Hey, well. No worries, we'll see you in a bit. Home by myself tonight, so he's my uh, <laughs> charge. 
Okay, guys, mm -hmm. I apologize. I'm going to have to recuse on this application and uh, I'll be back when I get back. Thanks, Truman. All right, uh, Ted, I'll swear you in if you could raise your right hand. You swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Theodore Hammer, H A M M E R. Thank you. Great, Ted. Why don't you uh, go ahead and share your screen? And you could walk us through the plans. Mr. Joseph, I just want to qualify, Mr. Hammer, if that's oh, okay with you. Ab absolutely. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hammer, have you <clears throat> presented in front of our board before? Yes. And your uh, license is still current? Yes, it is. Okay, you're qualified. Um, can you see the screen? Not yet, sir. Okay. Um, let me. Uh, I'm trying to uh, share my screen. Um, just bear bear with me, please. Um, after you hit the, the green button um, at the bottom that says share screen, there should be something that pops up and then you have to select, you have to select what window you want to share. Yes, uh, please, please bear with me. Yep. Um, having, having practiced this a number of times, um, the screen sharing function doesn't seem to be working. Mr. Hammer, if you move your mouse over yes. to the end and then bring it back into this to the screen where we're zooming, yes. uh, you see a green button at the bottom. It's in the center. It says share screen. And then there's another one that says raise hand and participant on the left. Um, I uh, could, uh, it's embarrassing, but please bear with me. No worries. Could you, could you uh, repeat that once more? I have, I can hear you. I have my screen share. Yes. There. If you, what do you what do you see on the bottom of your screen share? You see uh, all our pictures, and then there should be at uh, the bottom something. I, I don't, this is very embarrassing. Um, I don't. Uh, in the alternative, I could host the architectural drawings. OK. Let's do that now. No, I, I, I have it now. I'm sorry. Okay. I got a little ahead of myself. Can you, can you see it now? No. Cannot. We can just host it, Mr. Hammer. It's okay. <laughs> okay um, um yeah matt, matt if you don't mind uh you know we, we'd appreciate that thank you so much okay just direct me mr hammer and i will try to uh navigate you through Okay, Ted, you could see uh, you could see the plans on the screen, right? Ted? Yes. Yep, you could see uh, you could see the plans that Matt is sharing. I'm embarrassed to say no. Um, on the top of my screen it says new share or your screen sh sharing. 
Yeah, I actually see both of your screens. I see Matt and Ted's screen. I don't know if any of you guys use two screens at once. Oh, there we go. All right, Ted. Ted, we can see your screen now. We could see we could see uh, the internet browser. So if you just want to pull up the plans onto that screen, and we could go ahead. Um. <laughs> If I could be any more embarrassed, I would be. So, Ted, Ted, we could we could see your screen now. Um, so if you just pull up the plans, um, yeah, Ted, do you have two monitors? Because I, I guess you're just on a different on. one. Yeah. There we go. All right. right. Can Can you see my screen now? We yes, can. we can see. Yes. Yep. We see you navigating to the plans in your folders right there. All right, perfect. It's uh, loading up now. Great. All right, we could we could see we could see the plans, Ted. See how exciting that was. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Yes, it is. So. Um, this is the uh, front elevation of uh, the building and the location map, as you can see. Uh, the, the vital statistics are 23 uh, units, 18 one bedrooms, and five two bedrooms. Um, it's three residential floors over a retail floor with a driveway from uh, Grand Street to the rear, which has seven parking spaces, including one for the disabled. This is a, a site plan from above showing the roof of the building with the rooftop amenities, Grand Street to the upper portion, and the seven parking spaces in gray in our rear yard. Our first floor, which is on the bottom plan, shows um, two retail spaces. Um, the one that's the far right, uh, about 1,459 square feet. A retail space in the middle, 2677. And our building lobby and uh, attendant uh, utilities and um, refuge and bike storage on the far left. The upper plan shows the typical second and third floor. Um, which uh, has uh, mostly one bedrooms and one two bedroom on the upper right. Um, the unit sizes are uh, generous. We have, uh, and we have good ceiling heights, uh, sort of loft-like uh, spaces of uh, floor to floor is 11.7. So we're gonna have, uh, at least 10, 10 and a half feet for uh, the living rooms and bedrooms would be a, the uh, third floor uh, has more two bedroom units, um, three of them, uh, the rest are one bedroom and the roof plan you can see uh, has an amenity space, a green roof uh, surrounding uh, a patio area. Towards the front is a screened area uh, that hides the uh, condenser units for the air conditioning for the apartments. Um, bottom uh, picture, the elevation is uh, facing Grand Street. The top elevation faces our rear courtyard and you can see the driveway uh, illustrated on the upper elevation. Uh, our front elevation, we were having a glass uh, a garage door uh, activated automatically, which you can see is uh, towards the, the left. Uh, our, our other two elevations are blank uh, on our property lines, um, but have uh, uh, a finished uh, appearance, not just uh, plain block. 
Um, here is a bit more uh, showing the elevations. And then of course, the, the lower floor, uh, some enlarged details, uh, plus the garage door. Um, then, then some uh, miscellaneous details. Um, Materials uh, are uh, three variations of a brick uh, with a, a, a Luca bond um, and some perforated metal on the rear balconies. Um, similar palette uh, that we have across the street. And again, uh, some variations uh, to give the building a little more variety than just the plain brick building. And that's the Cliff Notes version. Great. Um, before uh, before Ted stops sharing the screen, does the board have any any questions related to the architectural plans? Do you have any questions, anyone? Yeah, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, just uh, in the application summary, it said two applications were denied under two former cases, but then do, uh, then it, uh, there was amendment to the Morris Canal redevelopment plan for mixed use E district. And uh, it seems like it's coming before us under that amendment. So just uh, if Mr. Hammer or Mr. Joseph could briefly uh, state uh, what uh, regulations uh, were amended and how the project complies with. Sure. So this this particular property we don't believe was really contemplated by the original plan. Um, the plan requires parking, but at the si same time prohibits curb cuts along Grand Street. So it, it was really impossible for us to both provide parking without putting a curb cut in the property. The first application we presented before the board that was denied was very similar to to this plan. It had parking, um, and and it was denied because it was too too many variances. Second application presented before the board eliminated the parking altogether. That was denied. Um, similar similar reasons. We needed a bunch of variances, albeit less variances than the proposal with the parking. We worked with the city to amend the redevelopment plan to allow the consolidation of these two lots, which we believe is the, the only lot in, in this zone of the plan that is, that is undersized, uh, and allow the creation of a curb cut along Grand Street. With that amendment, we now have an application that has, that has no, no variances. And that amendment was presented to this board, and this board recommended approval to City Council, and City Council adopted, ultimately adopted that amendment. Thanks, Council. Good job. Yeah, that's a good uh, description there, uh, Mr. Joseph. Thank you. Yeah. I have Absolutely. One. Here, yeah. I just have one question. Um, mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there any bike rack available in this project? Yes, it's located in the lobby area, Ted. If you want to go to that first floor plan, we have a, a bike storage room. You can see there's a cutout in the commercial space at the bottom of the screen. That's where the, the bike storage is located right okay. there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, Mr. Joseph. Great. So we we do have um, we do have Lee Klein, a traffic engineer, um, who's happy to answer any questions at the board if the board has any questions regarding traffic. Um, otherwise, I know it's a long agenda, so we won't present uh, uh, affirmative testimony if the board has no questions. Yeah, Mr. Joseph, allow me to ask the uh, commissioners. I, 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 for one, agree with you. I don't think I have. I think it's pretty straightforward. But anyone that have questions about traffic, we have to bring someone up. Uh, I don't have a question, Commissioner Torres. I don't have a question about traffic, but I do have a question of I didn't catch it. Maybe I just missed it. Um, the accident of the of onto Grand Street. Would there be a light or an indicator to allow people to know that a car is coming onto the sidewalk of Grand Street into the thing, or 
I'm not sure how is that one working on this project. Ted, do we have a do we have a warning a warning system when the garage opens? We will, and of course, as the garage opens, it certainly signals that something's going on. But we we will have a also a light that uh, indicates that there is traffic. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to. Thank you, Commissioner Torres. Okay, is that your uh, final witness, Mr. Joseph? That that is my final witness. I know uh, we also have a, an engineering review letter and uh, a staff memo, but I, I think we can address those after um, after Matt says a, a few words. Yes, very well. Agree. Okay, then um, I'll go ahead and open it up for the public or to the public. I'm sorry. Anyone from the public, this is for case P22-135 at 665-669 Grand Street. If anyone is able to speak on this matter, please um, raise your hand. Saying no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, made and seconded. The public is now closed. Uh, so st staff prepared a, a memo um, as well as the JCMUA and uh, the Jersey City Engineering Division. Um, did the applicant have time to review those and are they uh, in agreement yep. to make make changes Abs to plans? Absolutely. So the, the applicant agrees to all of the staff recommended conditions. We will work with JCMUA and City Engineering on addressing their comments. Um, the only thing that I, I think I want a little clarity on is the uh, comments one and two to the engineering is regarding the, the street trees. Um, sometimes staff and the board asks us to disregard those those comments in order to put as many street trees as possible. Um, <laughs> happy to work with staff and engineering on that. Yeah. It's, it's re <clears throat> that that's it. That's agreeable. We can work on those uh, two conditions um, regarding street we'll, trees. Yeah, we'll do whatever whatever you guys. Uh, would would prefer with the street trees okay uh with that i think um a nice summary was provided uh with regards to the past applications on this uh site um they've gone through the the architectural plans uh, the staff recommended conditions are fairly straightforward and they've already uh affirmed that they will be complying uh staff recommends approval Mr. Joseph, before we hear a final motion, uh, any more deliberation needed on your end? Uh, no, the applicant is in agreement with all, all the, the comments that that's our complete testimony. Okay, thank you. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-135 as presented to the board with staff recommendation for approval. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded, roll call. On a motion to approve with staff conditions, uh, acting uh, Vice Chair Gangadon. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Cruz. Commissioner Cruz. You're on Aye. Mute. Uh, Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Green. Aye. And uh, Acting Chair uh, Gonzalez. Aye. Our motion carries all in favor. Great. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, yeah, sir. Yeah. You too. Um, do we have uh, Chairman back? It does not look like it. It does not look like it. Okay. Now, which case did he want me to, to do second again? Can somebody remind um, me? Frank Ravelli, who I'm going to promote right now. Okay, that's what I can call it up. 19 uh, on the agenda. Thank you, Matt. Okay, at uh, this time I'll call case P22-119 up uh, for preliminary and final major site plan with C variances. Address is 550-560 Tunnelly Avenue. Applicant is uh, Maritime Management, LLC. So we have Mr. Rivellini. There he is, Mr. Rivellini, you are muted. Mr. 
Can, can you hear me now? There you go. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. You're up. Okay. Um, I represent Martini Management LLC. This is for a, 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 an application for a preliminary and final site plan approval with bulk variances and a design waiver. Uh, the property is irregularly shaped. It's 77 by 150 by 95 by 150. It's about 13,121 square feet. It has a substantial outcropping that comes into the site with uh, rocks. Uh, now this project is basically this is, is a uh, commercial use. It's uh, commercial on the first floor and office on the second floor. There was a prior approval for this same type of building. It was under P19073 in June 23rd of 2020. And what we're doing here now, just to give you an overview, is we're making the building smaller. The prior approval, the building was 8,372 square feet. The new one is 6,056 square feet. That's 2,316 square feet less. And by doing that, by reducing the building and shifting it slightly to one side, we're able to increase the parking on the site. Whereas under the prior approval, we needed 17 spaces and we had 13 and we got a variance for the 13. But now we have 17 spaces and we only need 13. So it actually just flipped around. Um, we're requesting a variance for a side yard of six feet and uh, a rear yard of 10 feet. The prior approval had a rear yard of 2.67 feet. And now we've moved that to 10 feet. And the prior approval had a side yard of 10 feet that was approved. And we're asking for six feet on that. And that's because we're shifting the building over to gain those four extra parking spaces. So I'm here to, the height of the building is the same. So I have three witnesses tonight, an engineer, an architect, and a planner. We're in receipt of the reports dated 9222 from the Department of Engineering and 9622 from the planner. And so with that, I would call my first witness, which would be Glenn Beckmeyer, the site engineer. Okay, promoting Glenn Beckmeyer, um, but who are your remaining two? Uh, the two witnesses would be Joseph Bruno, an architect, and the planner would be Raymond Tripodi. I am also here tonight with Mr. Martini, James Martini, who's the principal of the applicant, but I don't intend to call him, but he is available if anybody had any questions. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I forgot. Who, who's after Joseph Bruno? What was the other gentleman? Raymond Tripodi, a planner. Okay. Okay, Raymond will be joining us momentarily. Well, I'm, Mr. Okay. Evelini, while we're promoting your team, I am receiving your affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to case P22-119, 550 to 560 Tunnel Avenue here in the city. Again, this matter was scheduled for the September 6th hearing. We did not reach it and we carried it to tonight's meeting with the preservation of that notice. Had the opportunity to review the notice. I find all to be in order. We can mark that as A1 for purposes of the record. Mr. Rivellini, in light of your opening comments and my personal review of the application, uh, I think it's clear that the building has shifted, that the biggest question is the four foot difference in that minimum side yard setback, 10 was granted, you're looking for six. Uh, so if we could really focus in on that and the shrinking of the building, I think the board is familiar with the prior application having sat through it and voted on it, so. Okay, uh, I, I, I agree with that, Mr. Lampy. I just would ask the board to bear in mind that shifting the building gains us four parking spaces. And that is an important aspect of why we did what we did. So with that, I'll call Mr. Beckmeyer. Um, and okay, one more thing, Mr. Rivellini, is Ray Raymond under RC? Because there is no Raymond in this meeting. So if those, those individuals could raise their hand, we'll get them promoted. 
Yeah, I can everybody else out there in uh, the vi um, virtual world. If we could your application is called, if you could raise your hand, it would help the board secretary promote you and keep this moving in an orderly fashion. So it could be possible yeah. Mr. Tripodi is with Mr. Beckmeyer. Okay. Mr. Beckmeyer's on the screen, so let's find out. Good evening, yes, good Mr. Evening. Beckmeyer. Good evening. Uh, Yes, Mr. Tripodi is in my conference room, so we're using the same web login. So Perfect. I'm just okay. going to turn the camera over to him if he needs to be called. Mr. Beckmeyer, yep. can you do us a favor? There you go, and turn on your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am this guy, and Mr. Tripodi's in front of the door. Great. All right, I'll swear you in, Mr. Beckmeyer, all right, if you could raise your right hand. Do yes, you swear sir. any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Uh, my name is Glenn, G-L-E-N-N, Beckmeyer, B-E-C-K-M-E-Y-E-R. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beckmeyer, could you set forth your qualifications as an engineer, please? Uh, yes, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering from uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Are you licensed in 19... New Jersey? Uh, yes, I am since 1987. And I'm in good standing as of today. Okay, sir, you are qualified. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Beckmeyer, did you hear Mr. Lampe's comments that he wants? Yes, to... I did. Okay. Yes, I did. So it appears that the board is uh, familiar with our application because of the prior hearings. So if you could explain the difference in the side yard from 10 feet, we're asking for six feet, and why right. that was done, and the result of that. Yes, well, the uh, Mr. Beckmeyer, the, do you have a, a plan that you're going to share? Maybe we should get it I up can on the screen. It up if you would like, I just got to how you got to let me know how to do that. You scroll over to the bottom of your screen, you should see a couple of icons, a green icon saying share screen. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I hit the wrong one. Hold on, I'm a little jittery yep. here. You raised your hand. That's good. You raised your hand. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then uh, to the left of raise your hand to share screen. Yeah, I'm trying to how to get that on to where we are. So there we go. Just that one. Okay. When you hit it, it up. Oh, beautiful. You, go. you got it? Yes, How's that? sir. Okay. Can you make the screen up? Oh, there it is. I surprised myself. Action. <laughs> okay. So this is T1. This is the cover sheet. Okay. okay. Um, if I go down to just a couple of things, this is the existing, our survey and site condition, C1. Yes. Um, okay. As the uh, attorney mentioned, it's an odd shape, almost a trapezoid, but not really. Um, lot, uh, the next, that was a demo plan. Uh, this is our site plan. Okay. C3. So the issue we have is one where the building envelope is and where the building is. Um, the building envelope would only allow uh, basically like 2,200 square feet of a floor plan. Um, However, if we were able to, again, not use down to the two foot uh, on the rear yard, go to 10 foot and then reduce from what was approved at 10 down to six, we're able to slide the building over to give me enough room for this drive up a legal drive and uh, head first in parking. It also allows me to put a nice size uh, a block type of refuge area in the rear away from the road uh, yeah. away from everyone's vision on the road so you really can't see it it's back tucked away uh which we also thought was a nice touch to have it the site a little cleaner uh by having that in the rear of the property but because the building was moved over we we're able to get this full width uh drive and the uh, legal spaces on the right side, these four spaces here. If not, this whole area, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Might have been able to 
you know, you know what? We wouldn't be able to do anything over here because I couldn't get the cars in and out with any type of two-way access. So, Mr. Beckmeyer, those four yeah. spaces identified as 14, 15, 16, and 17 That's were not correct. there originally? No, they were not. So All the spaces the were in front spaces. of the building, and there was nothing on the side of the building in the original uh, approval. So we added those spaces, and therefore those spaces are 20 feet deep, and we've got a 24-foot drive aisle for two-way access to them? Yes, and to preserve that 24, we shifted that building over, reducing that side yard down to six from 10. Correct. That's, so to that's, preserve that, we'd have to have a 20 foot drive aisle, which we all know would cause a lot of concern backing in and out of those spots. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you, you, you could get a lot of cars moving uh, 90 degree parking. Uh, you could get a lot of cars backing out into the building and actually it'd be tough to get around it while a car is backing out. So the full width of the two lane drive is really, uh, to me, optimum for this type of parking. And Mr. Mr. Beckmeyer, can you just tell me what the difference in square footage of the building is now versus what it was, the floor print or floor uh, print? Right now it's the square footage is 6,600 square foot that's 33 on each floor uh gross and the Glenn. last one let's see i'm gonna hold it, hold it. but it was but it, uh, it was mr lamp you might be best if the architect would answer that question. yeah i think the architect might have that okay because uh, i don't think that number was accurate it's close but it's not accurate Yes. Um, Thank you, Mr. Revelator. I could give you the number, but I'd rather have the architect testify to it. All right. So, Mr. Beckmeyer, just to wrap up, what you basically did was you traded four feet for the. I, for the you know what? I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The right now we're at three thousand twenty-six square foot gross per floor. It was 3,300 square foot on the first approval per floor. So it went from 6,600 down to 6,052 total. The prior approval was 8,372 square feet. We're now down to 6,056 square feet. That's with both floors. Okay. Okay. 2,360 square feet less. And Mr. Beckmeyer, one question. Yes, sir. You traded four feet for the parking spaces on the side of the building and the, and the driveway, correct? And the refuge area. In yes. the refuge area. Yes. And um, also, the applicant made the footprint of the building smaller, which allowed this to happen too. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Okay. I have nothing further for Mr. Beckmeyer. Anyone, Council, anyone the only other know? question I have is, and we also increased that rear property setback. Yes. Right? That, that went, correct. That went that from 2.67 to 10 feet, right, Mr. Beckmeyer? That is correct. Thank you. Anyone Council. else have any questions for Mr. Beckmeyer? Anyone? No. Okay, Mr. Rivellini. Uh, I just called Mr. Bruno just to go over the square footage of the building. Okay. He's the architect. Mr. Rivellini, I'm really concerned about the footprint and the numbers, obviously. Okay, fair enough, Mr. Lampy. Then I'll call the planner. Six foot. But I want him to verify. I have the architect. Oh, you want the architect that. to verify it. Okay, fair enough. I understand. I think. I guess that was it. All right, who's your architect again? Joe Bruno. Joe Bruno. I don't know where he could have that work. I don't know. Joe's with Glenn? Yes. No, Joe is not with Glenn. Oh, there we go. I see Joe now. All right. Hi, Joe. I'll swear you in if you just unmute. Yep. All right. And raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Yes. Joseph J. Bruno, B-R-U-N-O. And my address is 29 Pascac Road, Park Ridge, New Jersey. Thank you. 
And Mr. if uh, Mr. Beckbar can just take his, uh, stop sharing his screen because I can't um, control that one. Okay. Mr. Great. Bruno, we just need to qualify you. Okay, I earned my Bachelor of Architecture degree in 1983 um, from the School of Architecture at New Jersey Institute of Technology. And I was uh, licensed in New Jersey as an architect in 1988. I've, um, uh, my license is in good standing as of today. And in, in all the years I've been practicing, I've uh, testified ex extensively throughout the state of New Jersey and also in New York where I'm licensed uh, before planning boards and zoning boards of adjustment. And Thank also you, before this board too, right? Yes, I, I testified before this board, I was the, the architect for the previous uh, previous building, previous application for this building. Okay, you're qualified, sir. Go ahead. All right, okay, Mr. Bruno, thanks. could you, Mr. Bruno? Oh, yes. Yes, could you just go over the square footage of this building compared to the prior approved building? Yes, the, uh, the, the, old, the, um, the uh, former application had a footprint area of 4,186 square feet, which, uh, which translated to a total of 8,372 combining the first and second floors. And the, um, the new um, application that you see before you this evening, the footprint area is 3,028 square feet for a total of 6,056 square feet. So that's a total of 2,316 square feet less. All right, Mr. Bruno, were there any other changes to the architecture of the building that the board should be aware of? No, the uh, the basic architecture of the um, the buildings uh, re remain the same. We um, we are um, uh, we just uh, we just essentially shrunk the building. We've got a um, a uh, center score uh, polished concrete block uh, facade with also a um, some br brick veneer at at the lower level, and then the upper level will be will be stucco smooth stucco finish and the, and the uh the finishes are identical to the the uh building that was was previously um approved mr lampy is there anything else you want me to get into with uh... i think that answers my exact question mr bruno you've shrunk the footprint of the building by over a thousand square feet in order to improve the site circulation and dry aisle layout pick up an increase in four parking spaces and overall yeah. improvements to the site. Yes, that is correct. For everybody, right. I, I'm okay with that. I would have nothing further for Mr. Bruno at this time. Okay. Do we have any commissioners with any questions? Anyone? Um, no. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Rivellini. Is that it? Yes, no. I would just call the planner to testify, Mr. Raymond Tripodi. He's with Mr. Beckmeyer. And Mr. Tripodi, I'll swear you in if you can raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give today is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. And if you could, just state and spell your name, please. Your name. My name, Raymond Tripodi, T-R-I-P-O-D-I. -I. Thank you. Mr. Tripodi, could you state your qualifications as a planner? Yes, I'm a professional planner in the state of New Jersey since 1985. I've testified in over 100 municipalities in the state of New Jersey. Um, I've also testified in six different states, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Ohio. Mr. Tripodi, uh, is your license current in New Jersey? Jersey? Say again? Is your license current in New Jersey? Yeah, my license is in New Jersey, 1985. Thank you, Mr. Petrovi. We accept you as an expert in the field of planning. Mr. Revellini? Yes, Mr. Tripodi, I would ask you, uh, in light of what Mr. Alampi has uh, stated, if you could give us a, an opinion as to whether or not this is a better planning alternative taking into consideration the shifting of the building over four feet to reduce its side yard from 10 feet to four feet 
to increase the parking on the site from a planning perspective, if you could give us your opinion on that. Yeah, in my professional opinion, um, it, because of the shape and shallowness of the lot, um, it would restrict the number of parking spaces. And also because of where it's located on Tunley Avenue, I think there's an advantage to the municipality and the, the local environs to have a maximum number of parking spaces for the retail and commercial that's planned for the site. Um, building closer to the side affords an additional four spots, which I think um, is very reasonable and is good for the community. There's no real off-site parking in this case because Tunley Avenue doesn't afford any kind of parking in front of the site. And we would have four spaces over what would be required by the ordinance, isn't that correct? Yes, that's correct. Can you give us an opinion whether or not there would be any substantial detriment to the surrounding? I don't see any substantial detriment. Um, in my opinion, the variances uh, will not be a substantial detriment to the public health and welfare in addition to benefits of the deviations will not impair the goals and objectives of the Jersey City Master Plan and Zoning Ordinance, nor would it be detrimental to the intent of the HC Highway Commercial Zoning District. And would there be enough light, air, and space around that building? Uh, actually, it's a very unique kind of a topography. Um, what you have there is in the back where the residential is, it's actually about a 27 foot cliff. Um, so, and the top of our building is a, in the order of 26 or 27 feet. So really there's no blocking. And that's why, you know, the rear actually, there's a rear variance, a rear yard variance, but it's usually because of open space and, and site like that. So in this case, because of the unique character of the, of the site, it's actually very beneficial. It's not really detrimental to the adjacent property owners. As far as to the left and right of the site, they're um, primarily retail uses and, uh, and commercial uses. So I don't think there's any kind of blocking of light or for the enjoyment of those retail and commercial uses. So in balancing the positive aspects against whatever negative aspects there may be, you would come out in favor that this is a better zoning alternative to what we had approved before. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I would. Um, I think it's in support of the, you know, the MLUL, the proposed support provides adequate light and open space for the adjacent residential property owners. It is consistent with the open space to the other retail and business establishments on Tonley Avenue. It also provides sufficient space in an appropriate location for a variety of residential, commercial, and industrial uses in accordance with the Jersey City Master Plan. Okay, I would have no further questions for Mr. Uh, Tripodi. Thank you, Mr. Rivellini. Any, anyone has any questions for Mr. Tripodi? Okay. That concludes your presentation, Mr. Rivellini? It, does. it does. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and open it up to the public now. Is there anyone is here to speak on case P22-119? Please raise your hand. I do see one already raised. Promoted Erica Walker. Thank you, Cameron. And Erica, if you're there, you can unmute. Apologies, I have a two-year-old toddler at home that took advantage of my phone. Um, so my uh, promotion was an error, sorry about that. No problem. Okay, so anyone else from the public? There are seeing no more public, I would like to move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, public is closed. We have Timothy, Tim. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> uh, just wanted to say that uh, 
to Mr. Revellini that uh, he uh, agrees to the conditions uh, upon approval in my staff report. Um, if I could just ask my experts if they have any comments or any problems with the staff reports. If not, we would agree to it. So, Mr. Beckmeyer. Uh, no, I do not. Okay. And uh, Joe Bruno? I do not as well. Okay, then we agree. Okay, um, and comments are brief. This was approved previously. Um, uh, I think the change uh, was necessary given the uh, size of the lot um, and the, uh, the topography of the area. Um, I'm happy to see that this uh, application is uh, you know, came back and made some changes and uh, planning approves of the application presented tonight. Thank you, Tim. Mr. Revellini, anything else before we go to a motion? No, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case B22-119 as presented to the board this evening with staff recommendation. Second. Okay, it's made and second and roll call. Acting Vice Chair, Commissioner Gondon. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Yeah, I like that the back uh, rear setback is 10 feet. That's more towards the residential, got the trees. The other six feet, I think, is de minimis. Uh, both the adjacent sides of those are currently vacant. And that side of the east side of Tunnel Avenue could certainly use a, uh, a boost. I wholeheartedly vote aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. And Acting Chairman Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. All in favor, motion passes staff motions. Mr. Lampy, do I prepare a resolution and submit it? Is that how it's You want it memorialized? Yeah. Okay. Just. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thanks to everybody. We have uh, Chairman Langston back, I see. I am back. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Glad you had some laughs while I was gone. Lots of fun uh, laughing at you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, uh, we're up to 13, Doc. Uh, yes, sir. We uh, went back. We've done Mr. Rivellini, as you saw. So, awesome. yeah, we're back to 13. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, so let's call item 13 is case P22-008 is a minor site plan for 95 Green Street. Yeah, I don't see Chuck Harrington in the panel. The screen oh, you're already up, oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Cameron, could you also uh, promote Michael Tool, T-O-O-L-E? Okay. And while you're doing that, just um, to move along, it's. Uh, Charles Harrington of Connell Foley on behalf of the applicant. Um, we did provide a you know, notice for this, although it is a minor site plan and there are no deviations uh, being requested. Um, so I don't know if uh, Mr. Lamp, if you want to mark those into the record. Since you did the work, Mr. Harrington, we're going to mark them. I'm um, in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to case P22 008 here in the city. All does appear to be in order. We'll mark them as A1 for the record. I appreciate that. All right. Thank uh, you. So, th this, this application is straightforward. Um, we are, uh, or my client is, is requesting approval to. Um, construct, uh, it's actually a canopy, not necessarily an awning, as it says on, on the uh, agenda, um, in front of the Hanshu Sushi uh, restaurant at 95 Green Street. That that restaurant is located there on, on the first floor as you walk up the stairs. Now, during um, COVID and the pandemic, uh, they've had a temporary structure up there almost uh, to um, you know provide for the outside dining uh, that everyone was was promoting. Uh, and now they're they're uh, proposing a, a permanent structure uh, that that is um, I think is is really appropriate for for the site and um, for this uh, the this area of the building. Um, and what I have uh, well, I only have one witness tonight. Um, we do have architectural plans, but Michael Tool is is the um, he's from Majestic Awning, and he uh, you know this is this is what he does. He's he's helped out with the design. 
uh, of the the canopy structure and has done this you know throughout you know New Jersey. So I'm going to ask that he bring you through uh, the proposal and if you have any questions, um, uh, Michael can answer them. Okay, thanks, Council. Sounds good. Yeah, hi, Michael. I swear you're going to be raise your right hand. Yes. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And can you state and spell your name, please? Uh, Michael Tool, T O O L E. Thank you. Hey, Michael, okay, you... go I'm ahead, sorry, Council. Go. I apologize. I, I, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I was just going to ask Michael to give a little bit of a background on, on the, what he does and how he's associated with the project. Great. We're thinking yes. alike. <laughs> I'm one of the owners at uh, Majestic Awning. So we're, we're really uh, awnings and outdoor structures. Uh, we've kind of installed about uh, 500 of these systems throughout the state over the course of the last six years uh, with not only uh, businesses and country clubs, a lot of uh, homeowners are, are looking to create outdoor areas where they can kind of uh, somewhat control the environment, be protected from the sun and the rain, uh, but also then add fans, lights, and screens uh, where if it's a, a rainy day or a, or a driving wind, you can kind of control that area underneath, um, especially when you've got a seating area where people are going to be trying to be dining. And if the weather was to change, that everybody wouldn't have to move inside. Um, so that's kind of a background of what we're what we're doing, um, um, you know, in regards to creating these outdoor seating areas. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, although you don't hold a license, obviously, in awnings um, <laughs> or overhangs, uh, yes, we'll qualify you. Okay, Mr. Thank Harrington, you. we're accepting the gentleman as an expert in canopies and awnings this evening. I guess, yeah, to the extent uh, there there are experts, yes, Mr. Tool would, would be one in, in how to uh, install and construct them. So qualified, thank you. All right, thank you. So Michael, if you, can you share your screen and walk us through this? Uh, yeah, I'll show, the, I'll show the renderings first. Um, this is kind of, so this would be, um, this is being installed kind of right over a, a row of windows. Currently there's existing um, black awnings there that are only sticking out about three, four feet. Um, we're proposing going over the, the, you know, the, old, the entire outdoor dining area um, with the canopy. Um, this is kind of showing it with the front um, shades and also you know, the uh, top. And this maybe just for the record, we'll we'll mark this as A2. Unless you have additional slides, we can mark them all as A2. Michael. Okay, I've got a I've got three or four here, just kind of giving you a side view um, of the area uh, that we're proposing, kind of coming off the building and then uh, creating this area to kind of have tables um, for seating at the restaurant. All right, so A2 will be a four slide uh, PowerPoint by structure. I don't see a date. Yeah. So these are all just giving you different uh, isolated views uh, on the system. Um, again, the top can close to protect you from the uh, sun and rain and then open uh, to, to allow uh, light and airflow through there. So Mr. Tool, can you just slide through the, the four different views? And this would be the fourth view right here. Uh, just kind of showing how it's broken down from the top, isolated top view. Screen is not changing on our end. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's... Sorry. Are you seeing that view now? That's the yeah, top got view it. looking down. That's the top view down. That's the top view. Uh, this would be a side view. I'm not sure if you saw this. This would be the side view. Yes, we got it. So this system is um, all extruded aluminum, powder coated finish. Um, it's got some lighting in it, uh, the ceiling fans, and then the these screens that would be rolling down uh, to kind of knock down a driving rain and also uh, wind. 
Did I provide all four views? Uh, I think just that straight on one we had that one. Yeah, we haven't seen. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the last of them. Okay. Okay, Mr. Tool, where's the lighting under there? Uh, the lighting is in the in the. If I'm giving you the overhead, let me go back to this overhead. So where the lighting is is shown is basically um, where the three fans are located. And then I've also got some additional beams running uh, in between these zones for additional lighting. Okay, so it's uh, strip lighting under there? Uh, they're uh, LED lights, low voltage LED lights. Um, that would be basically, it looks like they're, we're spacing them out every, I would say every about eight feet uh, underneath the system. Okay, and uh, council, obviously, these would only be in operation during uh, business hours, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right, anything else, Mr. Tool? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay, uh, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Tool? Uh, I, Go ahead. I have a question. Uh, what are the points of exit from this area? If there is emergency, what are the points of exit? Yes, so the um, there's a, currently a retaining wall there. So the only point of exit, uh, even without the structure there, would be off the uh, the left hand side, which it would wouldn't change from what's currently um, going on at the uh, at the restaurant. And the size of this uh, place, what is the size of uh, the whole? Um, it's a little, little under 62 feet long, um, going out 10 feet. And Mr. Tool, the, the, the side that's going to be looking at the street obviously is not the wall, right? It's the, the, is it, is it windows or what is that thing? Um, they're, they're actually motorized, uh, screens. So what they'll end up, uh, they kind of can be rolled up and down. They're motorized. And they would have uh, clear vinyl windows in them, uh, so as they kind of roll down, so you can you can see through the uh, screens. Right, and the access is going to be. I'm very familiar with this place. So if you're okay. if you're sitting if you're sitting there, you're. Um, how are you going into this structure again? It's going to be from the side, right? From You've got two side. options. Yeah, you could walk directly out of the restaurant. The doors are kind of in the middle of the structure, or if you were facing the front. Uh, and looking towards the building, the left-hand side would be open, which is also the way you could walk into Honshu from if you didn't walk uh, inside and directly went to the outside area. Okay. I mean, there, that area is very high wind tunnel, as you can imagine, as you can see. I know even their permanent, I mean, the temporary structure was uh, blown down with not too much wind not too long ago. So I'm, I'm assuming you, you know that, but um, yes. yeah, I'm just curious with those... Uh, those, those screens are gonna be coming down if they're gonna be able to withstand the winds that go through there. But okay, that's all I have. Um, this is Commissioner Torres, Mr. Torres. Um, this is 10 foot wide, um, uh, 67 feet long. The irrigated system on top, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have it like the uh, vice chairman, his college was point out the Wind tunnel that goes through there on the corrugated part. Um, it's only secured every sixteen feet, or are there are those like one foot? Um, the, that the the corrugated will be, be, be fastened. Uh, so they're this. yes, they're uh, they're kind of louvers that are motorized that open and close. Um, I'm talking about the roof of the top of the unit itself. Javi? Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. yes. So those, those actually, um, they actually open and close. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. With low voltage motors. Okay. Now the next question that would be the sky, the edge of that at ten foot is on the edge of the street, or is it going to be on a sidewalk? If people walking along the side of it. It's actually the poster right inside of 
about uh, a 20 inch or 24 inch high retaining wall that's running the whole length of uh, the structure uh, along the front. So we're staying inside of that um, existing returning return uh, retaining wall that's already there. Okay, I'm not, I'm it is, not, not, I can share not that screen and show you where it is. Yeah, that, that would be helpful, camera. Um, okay, the, the thing is, I just wanted to do the runoff of water. Do you have any of them catching the runoff of water that comes um, off the top of that? So when the, uh, let's say there's a rain and people are walking alongside of it, they're not getting something wet by this runoff so, of the structural. Yeah. So the, the water uh, drainage really doesn't change. The existing water with nothing there is, is just falling and then uh, running <laughs> to the existing drains, and it's going to, when it catches the water, it's going to be continued. We're not we're not putting any water out onto the street or anything like that. But it will be running down towards the street, right? Um, what it does is it the we actually catch the water on the top, run it through the front post, and then run it oh, out okay. the bottom. And we'll be running it towards where the drains are. Um, oh, you catch it. You catch there. it up on top to the post. Like, yes, like it's gutters. got a. It does have a gutter system on the top. And that would, when it's closed, and then we'd be running the water down through the posts. That's what that I was wondering. Yeah, I, I, you may have said that. I'm sorry, but I didn't catch that either. Good, good job, Commissioner Torres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that was just. I don't want people to be walking along and then it runs off the top, and next thing you know, it they get like a, a a wave of water thrown out thrown on them. You know. Uh, yeah. But that's that's a nice system. Thank you. That's what I have. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody else? Any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Tool. We appreciate it. Thank you. Council, is that your presentation? That is. Okay, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If anybody's here from the public that wants to comment on this application, please raise your hand. I see two hands raised already. Promoted if you're, case. In, if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Hi, Diane. I'll just swear you in. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can you state and spell your name, please, and give us your address? It's Diane. Last name is Case, K-A-E-S-E, -E, 192 Washington Street. Thank you. Ms. Case, good evening. We have three minutes for you. The project that is proposed at Honshu, uh, which is, by the way, one of our favorite neighborhood restaurants, is something that the HPHA really uh, supports. It's something that's needed on that corner. And for those of us who uh, enjoyed that restaurant immensely, which it sounds like some of you, um, it, I think this is a very interesting and creative way to deal with the outdoor space. The only comment as a neighborhood that we had in reviewing this um, was that we'd rather not see it as a black structure. We'd rather see it as something uh, slightly lighter that wouldn't stand out from the uh, uh, light gray color of the building. Um, and that's that's our only uh, comment on it. The rest of it is, it's, I think it's uh, very, again, very creative, well done. And uh, we look forward to it being installed and not having umbrellas flapping in the breeze there. So that would be great. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you, Ms. Case. Uh, Council, that's actually uh, an interesting point. Uh, are you open to a color? to maybe match the facade i think i mean I, I think this is a color that that my client has has reviewed uh you know closely with with uh, mr tool and I, I think that's what they're you know what's presented is really what they think works we understand the comments but i just think you know this from his ownership and his view he thinks that this this is what he's you know would like to say okay gotcha understood thank you all right. Once again, if anybody uh, from the public wants to comment, please raise your hand. And if you're Hello calling you in, Daly. yes, um, I agree with. Just hang on Diane. one moment, Miss Daly. Let me oh. just swear you in. All right, if you can. Sure, sure, sure. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I. Do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please, and give us your address? Sure. Um, Jean. It's spelled J E A N N E. Last name is Daly. It's spelled D A L Y. Um, and my address is 110 Sussex Street. Okay, thank you, Ms. Daly. We have three minutes for you. Yes, um, my question is 
is this? I guess we're assuming that they they already have a sidewalk license. Would that yeah. be they? I, I don't I don't believe this requires a sidewalk license. It's on private property, uh, as it's where you step up. Okay. Um, then the other question I do have, as far as permanency, is if the restaurant decides to move elsewhere or find a different space, will that structure remain with the building? It, or that's what I'm about that. Yeah, I mean, this approval would run with the land, not, not specific to the restaurant. So that a future operator could use this. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Those are my only two questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Daly. We appreciate it. Uh, anybody else from public, if you'd like to comment on this application, please press uh, star nine if you're calling in or raise your hand. Anybody Mr. else from I public? See, I see no more public. I move to close. Okay. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, Cameron, you have anything you want to add? Yeah. Um, well, first, I'll just ask that Mr. Harrington agree to the conditions in the planning staff report dated September 6th. Um, are those conditions acceptable? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, yeah, so this doesn't trigger um, any type of variances. Um, this complies with the objectives and goals of the Colgate redevelopment plan. Um, and it uh, it would actually probably be a resiliency design element uh, for those wind guards. And if the board recalls, Porto Laguero installed a similar feature um, and it came before this board a year ago. So it, it is the windy area and those, those wind guards and fixed structures like this on private property do come in handy. So uh, planning staff recommends approval. Okay. Thanks, Kim. We appreciate it. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P22-008 as presented to us tonight. Second. Uh, second it. All right. Motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay. Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Yeah, I think this is a good idea. I've been wondering when that was going to happen. It's been uh, these temporary uh, things keep falling, and I think it um, this is this is a much better way to go. I also think that the, the current color presented black is is actually much nicer than than a lighter color. So just my two cents. Anyway, I vote aye. All right, Commissioner Lipsky. Yeah, like Ms. Kay said, it's a, it's a favorite place. I was there just this Saturday, and was wowed. So I'm just wondering, uh, would that constitute a conflict? But okay, inside. <laughs> the, uh, uh, now. <laughs> uh, I think putting up and warning, I mean, I think they've had like tarp or tenting there, uh, if what I recall, but I think putting up a nice tarp and if it's one thing to, uh, Chuck is uh, you had mentioned that when it was fairly raised the point about, uh, would it, it haunt you if they move, uh, take the sign with them. And I think you said it would remain. Yeah. Well, it, the approval for this runs with the land. So a new tenant uh, could, could use it. But I guess my question is, would your client uh, uh, deed it or contract it that way? But, but would he, well, uh, would they, hopefully, would they, they, hopefully, hopefully they stay. On that note, I vote aye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Commissioner Dr. Desai. Yeah, this is a nice place, especially in winter. It's, uh, it's going to help people to have dinner down there. And I vote aye. Okay, Commissioner Cruz. Vote aye. Yeah, okay. Commissioner Gangadin. Yeah, I, li I, I like the um, permanent structure. I think it will serve the public very well. I vote aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. I apologize. My mic was off. Uh, aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor with conditions. Okay, thank, thank you. you, everybody. All right, let's move on to item 14 is case P22-106 is a minor subdivision for 420 Ogden Ave. Um, I think I'm promoted. This is Gene O'Connell for the applicant. We got you, counsel. Okay, um, this is a notice case uh, and I believe notice was submitted.
Thank you, Gene. I'm just pulling it up. Okay. Uh, Council, I am in receipt of your affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to case P2210. Uh, I've had the opportunity to review it. This matter was originally scheduled for September 6th. It was carried to tonight's meeting with preservation of notice. All does appear to be in order. We'll mark it as A1 for the record. All right. Uh, Thank you, Council. So, uh, Chairman and Commissioners, this is a very straightforward application. I know you have a large agenda, but it's a, sub, a minor subdivision for 420 Ogden Avenue. The subdivision map was submitted by uh, Pernesti Associates. Um, 420 Ogden Avenue is a lot, which is 50 by 109 feet. It has a residential structure on it, but it's already been determined by historic that it has no historic value. Um, the lot is located on the east side of Ogden Avenue between South Street and Hobson Street. Um, the applicant wishes to subdivide the lot into two lots, which would be 25 by 109 feet, a little bit larger than uh, a Jersey City uh, lot. And on the two lots, he would build two two family homes. And he has agreed to construct a shared driveway for the two homes. I don't know if you need any other testimony. I think uh, if that's enough, I'd ask that the uh, commission commissioners vote on that on this application. Um, I'm fine with that. Uh, again, this is only the subdivision tonight, correct, Gene? Correct. Okay. And uh, again, we have a shared curb cut. We're not removing any trees or anything out front? Nope. Okay. Uh, commissioners, anything? Uh, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody want further testimony? No, sir. No. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So at this time, let's open it up for public comment. If you're here from the public and you want to comment on this application, please uh, raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from the public? The chair seeing in public, I move to close the public. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Public is closed. Um, Mallory, it's pretty straightforward. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, I mean, this is consistent with the LDO recommendations for subdivision sharing a curb cut. It's as of right. There'll still be oversized lots because the lot depth exceeds that of the standard lot. Uh, staff recommends approval with the conditions as outlined in the staff report. Okay. Thanks, Mallory. And uh, Council, you're okay with those conditions, staff's yes. conditions? Conditions, yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chairman, for, the, for the record, the structures do obviously uh, traverse the proposed line. So are we pulling a demo permit, Council? We're going to get the structures. They will be, yes. Mr. Lampy, yes. Thank you. All right. Do you thanks, like to make a motion to approve case P22? Dash 106 is presented to us tonight. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval. <coughs> okay. Commissioner Dr. Desai? Aye. Oh, sorry, uh, Vice Chair Gonzalez, sorry, skipped you there. Um, aye. <laughs> Commissioner Gangadin? Aye. Commissioner Cruz? Aye. Commissioner aye. Torres? Aye. Commissioner Green? Aye. Commissioner Lipsky? Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Motion carries all in favor with conditions. Okay. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you, Council. Um, it. That's Mike, it's 658. Do you want to take a break now? I'd like to roll through the next two items uh, without a break if we can. Right. This seems like the spot. Thank you. Okay. So uh, 658, let's take a 10 minute break, everybody. We'll be back at 708.
All right, can we come to order again, please, everybody? No. And I apologize, we just had to run out with the dog real quick and um, I should be back in front of the computer uh, momentarily. Uh, and I believe that uh, Dr. Gonzalez is gonna recuse on these next two applications. No. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. I will be recusing uh, from both P22-107 and case P22-108. All right, thanks, Doc. I'll uh, see you in a bit and uh, have fun out there. Um, Thank you, very much. Santo, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Can you uh, call the address and the case numbers for me? The Chairman. I appreciate that, buddy. Sure. We're going to call case P22-107 for a preliminary and final major site plan, 50 Hudson Street. The applicant is 50 Hudson Street, LLC. Uh, Mr. Garcia is the attorney representing the applicant. He is up and on the screen. And Mr. Garcia, with your permission, we're also going to call case P22-108, a preliminary and final major site plan for 55 Hudson Street. And that applicant is 55 Hutchin Street, LLC. So with that, good evening, Mr. Garcia, your appearance for the record. Good evening, Council. George Garcia, Connell Foley here on behalf of the applicant for 50 and 55 Hudson. Um, just a little housekeeping, Mr. Lampe. I believe we submitted the notices and affidavits. This is a notice hearing. I just wanna make sure they're in order. That is correct. So for everybody's edification, both the board and members of the public, uh, these properties, 50 Hudson Street and 55 Hudson Street are located next to each other. And uh, while they are separate and distinct applications and they will be voted on separately and distinctly, I believe for everybody's benefit that they be presented uh, simultaneously, and counsel, obviously your witnesses will make the appropriate delineations and uh, exceptions to the applications as they're coming up. It is in the Colgate Redevelopment Plan, and I think because of the nature of the applications and the nature of the project, it's best to proceed in that manner. So with that, I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to application P22-107, that is 50 Hudson Street. I've had the opportunity to review it. All does appear to be in order. So we will mark that as A1 for the record. And just to keep the record clean, on case P22-108, I'm also in receipt of an affidavit and publication for that application. It also seeks preliminary and final major site plan. Uh, all does appear to be in order with that one. So we will mark that as A2, again, for purposes of the record, since we're gonna have crossing exhibits, I'm gonna mark that as A2 for purposes of the record. And Mr. Garcia, I will note for everybody here in attendance this evening, these applications are not seeking any variance relief. These are uh, large tower projects in the Colgate Redevelopment Plan on Hudson Street, 50 and 55 Hudson Street, and these are contemplated and permitted under the plan. Uh, there are no deviations that I was able to decipher, but of course, planning staff is here, has reviewed the application and will get into any variances being requested, but I did not see any variances being requested. I have them as preliminary and final major site plan applications without variance relief. So with that, Mr. Garcia, the application is yours. Mr. Langston, if and when you need me, I am here. Thank you, Mr. Right, Lampe. Go ahead, Mr. Garcia. Thank you. Yes, just just to, and I, I appreciate the the uh, review, Mr. Lampe. Just so everyone's clear, we we we're going to present this in a concurrent manner, meaning the architect and his team have prepared a digital deck presentation, which we will walk through the board with each professional. So, as Mr. Lampe mentioned. These are two separate applications. One is for 50 Hudson, which is a 42 story building with 924 dwelling units, 12,000 square feet of retail and 467 parking spaces and really attendant significant 
public improvements uh, to tie in the waterfront. 55 Hudson is a 58 story tower with 1,017 dwelling units, 37,185 square feet of ground floor retail, and another 25, 561 square feet of retail on the second floor with 387 parking spaces. Um, as some of the commissioners know, these are the last two parcels in the Colgate redevelopment plan, which was drafted about 30 years ago. Um, it's the intent of our client and their professionals working with planning staff. Uh, these two tower elements will finalize um, the vision uh, that the Colgate Palmolive redevelopment plan uh, sought out almost 30 years ago. So with that being said, this, this evening I have five witnesses. Uh, Matthew Newells, who's our civil engineer from Dresden Robin, Frank Fisaro from Hendel Architects. He's the main architect on the development. Tom Carmen, who will discuss landscaping ar architecture. Uh, the Colgate Palmolive plan has really detailed requirements as it relates to landscaping. Tom will walk the board through that. <clears throat> we also have Carl Penke, who is our traffic engineer who was commissioned to do traffic impact studies for the neighborhood, uh, for the development projects. And lastly, um, we have Ed Colling uh, to go over from a planning perspective uh, and again confirm that 50 and, 50, 50 and 55 Hudson uh, are essentially as of right developments without uh, deviations of any kind from the Kobe plan. So I'd like to kick off the meeting by uploading the presentation um, excuse, excuse me, sorry, this is Cameron. Um, Ed Colling is not in the audience as an attendee, so is he under a different... Yeah, he, he's here, Cam. He's promoted. Okay. We got Ed? Okay. <laughs> okay, so okay. commissioners... And, Councilor, oh, sorry. Are, we mar are we marking this uh, presentation? Yes, I was just going to tell Mr. Lompe, this is a... I believe it's... 66 pages uh slides but it includes everyone's testimony and it was prepared on september 20th 2022 by handel architects and we would like to mark it as a3 for both 50 and 55. that's how we're going to mark it it's titled planning board presentation 50 hudson 55 hudson Jersey City, New Jersey. It's dated September 20th, 2022, and it has all of the various professionals down the bottom. Uh, it is, you said, 67 slides? I believe, yes. We'll, we'll okay. give you the final count. And of course, uh, after the presentation, Mr. Garcia, we will need this digitally if it hasn't already been provided to staff. That, that will be provided to Mr. Ward right after the presentations. This Thank evening. you. Okay, okay so, you. so if it's okay with the chairman and, and the rest of the commissioners, I'd like to call Matthew Newells uh, from Dresda Robin. Is he there? He's here. I'll swear you in, Matt. Sure. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Sure. My name is Matthew. Last name is Newells, spelled N-E-U-L-S. Thank you. Mr. Knowles, good evening. Uh, obviously, we've called by you many times in the past. That license is current tonight? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified again. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Mr. Knowles, why don't you walk the board through the civil presentation, starting with 50 huts? Sure, absolutely. Good evening, everybody. Um, the first slide on your screen here is a, is a map prepared just to give some context to the location of uh, 50 Hudson as well as the adjacent site 55 Hudson. So starting at the top of this, at the top of the screen there, you can see the, the J. Owen uh, Grundy Park Pier as well as the very edge of the Exchange Place Pass Station labeled with number one, uh, Exchange Place itself labeled with number two coming down the screen. Uh, the the lot on the right that's colored in yellow is is the site of 50 Hudson uh, right on the waterfront adjacent to the uh, New York Waterway uh, ferry landing on the waterfront. And uh, the lot to the left is 55 Hudson just for different reference purposes. We'll get back to that one uh, in, in a little bit. Uh, 30 Hudson located just to the south of 50 Hudson. That's the, uh, the building also known as the Goldman Sachs building. Uh, can you advance the slide, please? 
And again, this is a, this is an aerial image, uh, which was a recent aerial image. And again, just just utilized to to highlight where 50 Hudson is located. It's located um, again next to the ferry terminal there, and you can see in the image there's the um, existing parking garage, uh, which is which is located on the site today. Uh, advance the slide, please. So this is uh, this is the uh, a slide of the uh, of the site layout plan that was included in the in the engineering plan package distributed to the board. I'll start with a few statistics about the site. Um, and some of these were mentioned by Mr. Garcia in his opening uh, statement, but uh, the site includes uh, 84,144 square feet of area, roughly 1.9 acres, located in the Colgate Redevelopment Plan. Uh, frontage on Hudson Street to the left or the west, Sussex Street to the north or up. Uh, Hudson River Waterfront Walkway to the east, immediately adjacent to our property uh, that we're here to talk about on the east. And Morris Street to the south, uh, which is which is which is a, a vacated street, but located just to the south of the uh, of the site. A, a few of the uh, landmarks I talked about before the Paul Hook Ferry Terminal is immediately adjacent, and we're about 0 0.2 miles, two tenths of a mile south of the Exchange Place Path and Hudson Bergen and Light Rail stations. Uh, a few statistics about the building and the development, which were included in our zoning table that was provided with the engineering plans. 924 residential units proposed on 42 stories, uh, 12,017 square feet of retail, building height, uh, 476 feet. Um, uh, the, you know, this, this is to be located over the garage, which has 467 spaces available for the development, uh, proposing 466 indoor bicycle spaces, eight outdoor bicycle spaces and racks, um, total gross, uh, Square uh, gross floor area is approximately 756,400 square feet. Proposed FAR at nine, and that matches the maximum allowed in the redevelopment plan. Um, there are setbacks provided, uh, 15 feet required at Hudson Street, providing a setback of 31 feet, 10 inches along Hudson Street. So more than more than what's required. Uh, and the step step back. Uh, along the Hudson River Waterfront Walkway required uh, 15 foot and it's proposed at 66 foot five inches. We do have 41% lot coverage that is as calculated by the definition in the Colgate Redevelopment Plan. So I wanted to point that out. Um, and this development does include public open space of approximately 44,600 square feet. So moving on to the site circulation plan, which is what's on the screen in front of you right now. Uh, we have a parking entrance here at the north side on Sussex Street. And that's kind of indicated where you see the two arrows, one pointing in and one pointing out. That's an entrance to the parking garage. That, that, that entrance is there today to the parking garage and we'll maintain that in its current location. Uh, we'll have loading to the right of that. There's load two loading spaces located right to the right of that along Sussex Street as well. Um, as well, there is an open public plaza decking over the existing garage facing Moore Street on the south side of the of the property there, and that's shown where it says public open space uh, on the south side, the, down, the lower side of the building. Uh, there'll be more testimony provided with the uh, landscape architecture uh, testimony later in the presentation to give us some detail on that. Uh, there are additional access points to the Hudson River waterfront walkway. Those are two areas where there are steps coming down from the plaza on the right that will provide direct access down to the Hudson River waterfront walkway. Um, and uh, any portions of the walkway disturbed during construction will be restored to the existing condition. So any, to the extent any, any work along the walkway causes disturbance that will be restored with the existing same materials. So it's not to be distinguishable. Um, could we advance the slide please? Perfect, thank you. Uh, we will be reusing this. So this this is a uh, an image of the grading and drainage plan that was presented in the package. Uh, in terms of drainage itself, we, we, we will be reusing uh, storm sewer connections that were provided for an anticipated building here when that garage was built uh, over 20 years ago. So there were a couple connections, uh, one to the right and one to the left side, which were anticipated, they were capped and they, they will be reutilized to convey storm water to the existing separate storm sewers in the neighborhood. Um, and again, to reiterate, we will be connecting to separated storm sewers. This, this is not an area served by combined sewers. Uh, and due to that fact that we're able to drain stormwater directly to the Hudson River, 
stormwater detention is not required by the, uh, the city stormwater control ordinance. Uh, the, the lobby is set up more than two feet above the 100 year flood elevation, which exceeds the minimum requirements in the uh, applicable flood hazard regulations. So uh, in terms of the, the lobby entrance is at 14.5 14 feet. That's more than two feet above uh, the flood hazard elevation to give some context to that. Can you advance the slide, please? This is the utility plan. Uh, again, with the drainage, uh, some of the other utility connections are likely to use existing connection points that, that were provided when the garage was built in anticipation of the building. Uh, sanitary sewer will connect to the existing separate sanitary sewer line in Hudson and Sussex Street. So that's to the left, and then Sussex Street is, is up toward the top of the screen. Electric service will be provided via Sussex Street with underground transformer uh, transformers underground conduits and transformer rooms above grade located along the Sussex Street building frontage. And those, those dark lines you can see running along Sussex Street, um, the really dark lines there, those are the electric proposed electric conduits going into transformer rooms along there. Gas service will be provided from an existing connection in Hudson Street, again, on the left side of the, of the sheet. Uh, and one more slide for the uh, 50 Hudson Street part of my presentation. This is the removals plan. Um, and really what, what this is showing is some removals of some features along the outside, particularly there, there's that there's a vent structure on the upper right portion there that's an existing uh, snorkel vent that'll be removed to make way for a new plaza space. Uh, but the majority of the site, which is that existing garage is going to remain in place just as it is today, with the entrance remaining in the same spot along Sussex Street. Um, uh, and then just to add, just to add to, to what I've said and what Mr. Garcia has indicated as well, there are no deviations proposed from the Colgate redevelopment uh, a plan. Um, we have received uh, minor engineering comments from the Jersey City MUA and the Division of Engineering as well, and we'll work with um, with both of those agencies to address each of their each of their comments in the letters. And that concludes uh, my part of the presentation on 50 Hudson. Moving on to uh, the 55 Hudson part of it with the next slide. Again, highlighting the location of 55 Hudson, immediately across Hudson Street um, from, from 50 Hudson. And um, I'll read some statistics about, about the 55 Hudson site. Uh, it's, it contains roughly 80,586 square feet or 1.85 acres, Look, also located in the Colgate Redevelopment Plan. Uh, and 55 Hudson has frontage on, on uh, Sussex Street to the north and Moore Street to the south, just like 50 Hudson. But in this case, Hudson Street is east of the site on the right side, and Green Street is west of the site on the left side. Roughly the same distance to the Exchange Place, Hudson, uh, Exchange Place Path and Hudson Bergen Light Rail Stations, 0 0.2 miles, two tenths of a mile to the north. Um, so quick statistics about the development. This building is proposed to have 1,017 residential units uh, in 58 stories, 62,749 square feet of retail space. Um, the maximum proposed height in this uh, for this block is 675 feet. Uh, proposed, we are the the project proposes a height of 637.5 feet, so a little bit less than that maximum height. Uh, 378 vehicle parking spaces are proposed within the building. 513 indoor bicycle parking spaces uh, in the building and 14 bicycle parking spaces outside in racks. Um, the total, grace, uh, total gross floor area is 930,597 square feet. Uh, in terms of the building's FAR, uh, an FAR floor area ratio of 12 to one is proposed, whereas 15 to one is the maximum. So a little bit less than the maximum uh, is proposed. In terms of the setbacks, uh, the minimum setback from, from Hudson uh, Street is 15 feet and we're proposed at that 15 foot setback. Uh, Green Street is uh, a minimum of 20 foot is proposed from the original right of way line. And with the project proposed at 23 foot, eight inches of setback, which is a little more than the minimum. Lot coverage 74% as calculated per the Colgate redevelopment plans standard. Could you advance the slide, please? So this slide again is a, um, it, it comes from sheet, uh, from the, the site layout plan that was circulated to the board. 
Um, again, go through, there are parking and loading entrances on Sussex Street, just like with the previous building. Uh, the parking entrance is located on the top part of the page where the two arrows are pointing uh, out towards Sussex Street. Immediately to the right of that, we've got, uh, we've got uh, a loading area, three, three loading spaces there, immediately adjacent to that again with access through to uh, Sussex Street. Uh, open, there's an open public plaza at the southwest corner of, of the site at the corner of Green and Morris Streets. Uh, and that's indicated where it says open space area uh, on the lower left corner of the building. And then a larger plaza located along Hudson Street to the right um, uh, that parallels Hudson Street with, with various improvements. Additional testimony will be provided during the landscape architects portion of the presentation. Um, um, can you advance the slide, please? This is the grading and uh, drainage plan. Uh, and, and again, stormwater runoff will discharge to separated sewers. Again, this is an area of the city that has separated sanitary and storm drainage. So they'll discharge the separated sewers in Sussex Street uh, at the top of the page and to Moore Street at the bottom of the page with, with several different connections. Um, in terms of utilities, uh, sanitary, uh, can you advance the slide? I'm sorry. Sanitary sewers will connect to separated sanitary sewer lines in Hudson and Morris streets. So at, at the right to Hudson Street and Morris Street at the bottom of, of the page, electric service is gonna be provided to underground transformers in Sussex Street um, uh, within ground, as I noted, underground transformers. And those are located, those six rectangles together near the uh, top, you know, left half of the building on Sussex Street. Gas service will be provided from an existing main in, in Sussex Street. And um, can we go to the next sheet, please? And this is the removals plan uh, for this project. And I, I guess I can elaborate a little bit on the existing, the existing condition of the site is this is just a, a surface parking lot. So uh, this removals plan is showing, uh, you know, the entirety of the surface parking lot to be removed along with its curb and pavement and uh, improvements around the site, as well as a portion of the area in Sussex Street to accommodate utility connections and utility features of the site. Uh, once again, like like with the last, uh, with, with 50 huts and there are no deviations requested from the Colgate Redevelopment Plan. Uh, we did receive a letter from the Jersey City MUA and the Division of Engineering. We'll work with both agencies to address uh, all of the comments in those, in those, in those two letters. Uh, and that concludes the, the engineering part of the testimony. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knowles. We appreciate thank you. it. Um, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Knowles? Yeah, I do have a question. Sure, go ahead, Doctor. Uh, I want to know, are you in compliance with the parking spaces and uh, you have 1943 apartments and uh, uh, you have uh, 378 plus 467 parking spaces. So are you in compliance with the square feet? Yeah, yeah. so are you asking for compliance with the minimum number of parking spaces? Yes. Yes, we are. Yes. Yep. And do you have alert for going out in the parking place and coming out if there is somebody walking outside there, you know that a car is coming out? And Yeah. Are you asking if there will be an alarm on the building? Yes. Uh, you know, I, I, that's something I may defer to the architect, but I'm sure we can accommodate something if that's required in terms of, in terms of that arrangement. There's so many people living there and going out and coming. There should be an alarm system when the cars are coming. So nobody is, you know, affected or there is no accident or something like that. The commission uh, decide maybe, maybe we'll have the traffic engineer um, address that issue. Mr. Knowles, he might be able to shed some light on that. Oh. Yep. Mr. Garcia, we're going to want some kind of control, obviously. I, I, uh, I'll, I'm sure my client is more than happy to accommodate that. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Garcia. agreed. Agreed. Um, okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Dr. Desai, was that it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner, Commissioner Torres. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner. For the engineer, and I was the uh, part on uh, 50 Hudson. The, sure. um, the existing parking lot next to it. Hudson, yes, um, and um, knowing by experience of being down in that area, there's a lot of um, you mentioned the sewers are going to be connected to existing sewer lines that are capped off. 
right? Yes, for, they, for 50 Hudson, yes, that's true. They were, they were, they were there anticipation of the other building that was going to open up whenever it did come up. Right? Yep, um, that's correct. Okay, now what happens to the, the pipes and the stuff that are connected already that wrap around that building? The inside, yes, I know uh, the, uh, looking at the, the picture now on the screen on your left-hand side, are you going to be relocating those or they're going to stay part of that garage even though they are covering Goldman Sachs building. Is there gonna be a separation of what's inside the Goldman office building and what's inside that, that garage area? Okay, so let me, it's a couple, couple parts of that question. Yeah. Uh, what's on the screen now is the 55 Hudson, which is the surface parking lot. So that's, we could go back a handful of slides if you wanted to, to get to 50, uh, maybe five or, let's see. Uh, I'm just, I'm just yeah. wondering because you talk about this one here where you have the removal. Yeah. So this is the removal plan for 50 Hudson that's on the screen now, okay. so uh, which shows that, that underground garage, right? That that subterranean right. garage uh, that's there. Uh, and for the most part, and there'll be more testimony through the other disciplines, the architect and such. Um, but but this garage was extended to the site and was built in the site in anticipation of there oh. being a building over here, you know, more than 20 years ago. And so what would ha what happened was there's there's a slurry wall around the site. Uh, and, and there are utility connections that, that, that were extended through the wall and then just capped in anticipation of this future tower being built here. Yes. And we're, we're going to utilize those both for drainage and, 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 and sanitary sewer and, and the like. Yes, I understand that. But yep. there is also other stuff connected in that garage that wrap around the building. Uh, are they going to stay existing or are they just going to be... Um, because they they're there for COVID, they're there for they're connected to the Goldman Sachs build the Goldman Sachs build. Yeah, are they going to separate them? Are they going to separate everything from the two buildings, or are they going to allow them to stay connected inside those buildings? There is a PA system in there that balances the water. It wraps around there and it, it levels out the PA system that goes into the Hudson River. I'm just wondering if things like that will stay existing or is it going to be separate, cut off and separated from the Goldman Sachs building to this building? Commissioner Torres, I could, let me see if I could get, I, I know what you're asking because I'm, I'm familiar. I might with be stuff. ahead of myself. We could do this later on. It's just, just something well, what, I was wondering. What I'd like we to do is if, if we could continue with the architect, but I will get the answer from my design team. So you, okay. I know what, I know what you're asking, but. If it, it, what, what I was proposing to do now is call the architect Frank Fasaro. I um, just for the and record, I only brought it up because we were at that point the engineering and the removal part that he showed. So I have no problem moving on and talk maybe talk about that, it later. Thank you, Commissioner, uh, Chairman. If it's okay with you, I, I, if there's no other questions, I can move on to the architectural part of the presentation. Yeah, let's uh, check with everybody. Any commissioners? Anybody else have any questions? For Mr. Newell's? Real quick, a yes or no for Mr. Newell. Uh, in anticipation, uh, 20 years ago, uh, in the capping of the pipes, uh, was it uh, approximating the number of units that are being proposed tonight and the use? It, it was probably approximating. My understanding was it was proposed as an office tower at the time. So at that time, yeah, it, it has adequate capacity, but I don't know what their anticipation was. I know it was... You know, because there were there were permits that were sought, uh, state permits for flood hazard and the like, that those anticipated an office tower at that time. Okay. So, so, so yeah, it wasn't the same use, but, but in terms of in terms of water and drainage, you know, the drainage is, isn't going to matter whether it's an office building or a or a residential building because you're just talking about an area that's receiving water from the roof. Um, in terms of sewage, it's a little bit more from a residential building, but again, the sizes are appropriate for what we are proposing. Thank you, Mr. Nils. All right. Thank you, Mr. Nils. Commissioner, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank um, you. Council, before we go on, unless uh, commissioners, anybody else have any questions? You're not at this time. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, we do have uh, two hands raised. Um, we don't have public comment open at this time, but uh, I do see, um, I'm sorry, Councilman Gilmore out there. Uh, 
as a courtesy to any council people, um, we certainly would bring you up. Um, Cam, if we could, or Matt, can we? Uh, Promoted Gilmore? Councilman Gilmore. Hey, can you hear me? We can, Councilman. How are you? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Well, good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, do you got a uh, swim in? I'm sorry. Um, Mike, uh, do we swear in a Councilman? <laughs> Absolutely. We, we do, yeah. I just wasn't sure if he was asking a question or if we, he wanted to put on his testimony now. So, yeah. Councilman, I, I'll, I'll swear you in right now, right? If you raise your right hand, do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Uh, Frank Gilmore, F-R-A-N-K, Gilmore, G-I-L-M-O-R-E. Thank you. All right, Councilman, thank you for coming in. Uh, the floor is yours. Yes, um, uh, I'm not necessarily here to speak in favor in or against this project. Um, I just have an issue with with the um the the expediting if you will um i I've, I've i've met with the developers and their attorneys yesterday i was actually my first time meeting with them um and i i just don't have enough information as it relates to um these proposed um for this development i understand that it is a project that's as of right um, but it is a it, it's, it's a big project. It's a huge project. And to the best of my recollections, there have been other projects that was at this magnitude that were as a right that went through the community participation process. And, you know, all parties were while everyone didn't agree at the end, everyone did at least have the opportunity to voice their concerns. I've spoken with my colleague, Councilman Solomon with respect to, because this was prior in Ward E and after the redistricting is now in Ward F, and he have not had an opportunity to meet with the development and their team other than um, yesterday. And for me, it's, it's, it's just extreme. It's like, it, it's moving so fast. So I'm requesting or I'm asking if we can, um, I guess, postpone this to the next available meeting. Um, like I said, I did have an opportunity to meet with the developers, the lawyers, and everyone. And I'm just uncertain about a lot of things. I reached out to uh, planning today to discuss some things. And I, I just don't have like just, just any information on what's about to transpire. Well, not any information, not enough information. And I'm not saying that I'm uh, against this project by any stretch of the imagination. I understand that something has to go there. I don't think anyone wants to see it in its condition or the current form that it is in. But I, I really would like the opportunity to really um, sit down, do my homework, understand this, understand uh, what are the community feelings as it relates to this project. So um, that is my request. Um, and, and for those reasons, that that's why that's my request. Understood, Councilman. Um, as as everybody knows, uh, the application is in front of us. Um, I don't have the information on when the application was deemed complete. We do have a time frame. We have to work under when an application comes before us. Um, generally, those applications where you know, it's pulled back and the applicant meets with the community, that's on the applicant. That's not something the board can mandate. Um, we always encourage every applicant to meet with any community groups in the area. Uh, this would be in the Colgate redevelopment plan. I don't know that there is a designated community group there. Um, but again, we, you know, under the state MLUL, we can't mandate that they meet with anyone. Uh, again, we always appreciate that they do, but unfortunately the application's in front of us and uh, we have to continue on with it. And Commissioner, uh, Chairman, I just want to reiterate that um, my client um, is willing to have whatever additional discussions with the councilman 
or anyone else in the adjoining neighborhoods as this process moves forward. Um, but from a timing standpoint, that would be difficult to do now, but we're willing to work um, with the community on whatever issues they may have as we go forward. Um, as, as the board knows that these projects have a lot of layers, um, this is just phase, the, the preliminary start of it. We have, you know, construction permits and other things that we will have to obtain from the city. And in that process, we will continue to work with the city with and whatever neighboring neighbors and the Councilman Gilmore, we spoke yesterday and Councilman Solomon will continue to work with them and outreach um, and do what we can to address any concerns. Um, All right, thank you, Council. Uh, uh, anything yeah. else, uh, Councilman? Uh, uh, no, I'm, uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I, I understand uh, the deadlines and everything. Um, it's, 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 it's just really hard because like I, I really, I, there's, I don't, they're saying that the lot was at one point, it was one lot, then it was subdivided, then it may have been possibly some type of abatement deal, some escrow money. And, and I just don't have any information to say if this is validated or not validated. And I, I'm just, I, like I said, I'm just requesting requesting that because of those reasons. Um, I understand that there are, are benchmarks individuals have to meet with regards to funding and interest rates. And I understand all that. However, you know, in our office, we like to operate in a fair and transparent manner. So as the council person of that area, that is my request. I understand everyone's position, but again, um, I believe that the, the, the process that's laid out afford each and every one the opportunity to have these meetings beforehand before deadlines are um, before deadlines are coming up. Um, so I mean again, it's just hard. It's literally really hard to 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 not speak up about this seeing that, my first time literally actually hearing anything about any of this was from the developer was essentially yesterday. And again, my colleague who have been the council person of that area um, before me haven't had any um, conversations then. So um, you know, that's my position. Um, and you know, that's why I still. Okay, thank you, Councilman. We appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate your comments. Uh, once again, unfortunately, this is in front of our board um, and we are under, you know, state of MLUL to hear the application. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Garcia, if you wanna continue. And sure. everything oh. else in the public, I saw a number of hands come up and down, but um, that was strictly for Councilman Gilmore. We'll hear uh, everybody during public comment. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I'd, I'd, I'd like to commence with the architectural part of the presentation and call Frank Fusaro, who's a partner in Hand Handel Architects. Yes, good evening, George. How are you? Hi, Frank. Hey, let, me, let me just swear you in. If you raise your right hey. hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? My name is Frank Fusaro, spelled F-U-S-A-R-O. Thank you. Mr. Fusaro, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past as well. Your license is current tonight? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Fusaro, you were engaged by the applicant to um, design the buildings at 50 Hudson and 55 Hudson? That's correct. And you're familiar with the Colgate Redevelopment Plan and its requirements? I am. Okay, and your office prepared this part of the architectural presentation, which you're going to walk the board through? Yes, we have. Okay, so why don't you just go ahead and walk the board through uh, the architectural pro aspects of the project. Great. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, thanks for having us. So uh, we've seen this slide before uh, uh, with Matt. Uh, just want to reiterate a few points here. 
uh, the tax block 14502, lot 13 is 50 Hudson Street, shown in yellow with a lot area of 84,144 square feet or 1.932 acres. Uh, you can see its location here in the uh, mixed use district of Colgate redevelopment uh, along the waterfront. Um, really, uh, our goals here in terms of design really to reinforce the urban design objectives that were outlined in the plan. Uh, making connections to the to the north exchange place and the office buildings as well as to the west uh, to the inland side of 55 Hudson uh, and the residential neighborhood of Paula, Paula's Hook. These are some photos of the context. I'll just work from uh, the top left uh, clockwise uh, to give you a sense of uh, what's out there today. I, I know Matt has spoken a lot about it, but a little uh, photographic survey, uh, starting with the upper left, a view from Hudson Street looking to the north. Uh, you can see 70 Hudson Street's office building on the right hand side of the image and the 77 Hudson on the left hand side. Uh, in the foreground are both of the sites that we're here to talk about this evening. On the right hand side is the 50 Hudson Street site surrounded by the, uh, the fence protecting the existing uh, parking deck. Uh, and on the left hand side is the surface lot of, of 55 Hudson Street. Uh, the center photo, the corner of Hudson and Morris Streets looking west on the right hand side is the surface parking lot of 55 Hudson and the Liberty Towers on the, on the north side of the street. Uh, the corner of Hudson and Morris looking east uh, with the Morris Street Plaza in the center. Uh, the 30 Hudson Street building or Goldman Sachs on the right hand side, silver, silvery blue uh, glass. Uh, and metal and the uh, fence around the surrounding the existing parking deck. Uh, the corner of Hudson and Sussex looking to the east to the waterfront uh, and lower Manhattan in the distance. Uh, the site on the right hand side there surrounded by the fence. Uh, this is where the existing parking deck entrance is. Uh, similarly, uh, on the left hand side of that photo is 70 Hudson Street with its uh, loading uh, and also its parking entrance. In the center, uh, the corner of Hudson and Sussex uh, looking west uh, with 77 Hudson and 70 Green on the right hand side and the 55 uh, Hudson Street site on the left hand side. And finally, the view from Green Street, excuse me, looking to the north uh, with the uh, Paulus Hook residential area on the left hand side of the image. Uh, on the right hand side, the foreground is the parking lot of uh, surf, existing surface parking lot of 55 Hudson Street. And beyond that is uh, 70 Green Street, the glass building, which is located uh, 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 on the, you know, on the block just directly to the north. This is a combined site plan of both blocks. I'll, I'll focus on uh, 50 Hudson Street here. Uh, but just some things that we wanted to show you because in, in contemplating our design, the way we set this up in terms of the buildings and the building orientation on the site, uh, uh, we chose to run the buildings in the east-west direction. You can see them in gray there. Uh, uh, those are the towers that sit on top of a base, which is in white uh, at 50 Hudson Street uh, with a new public open space directly to the south. Of the, of the podium of the building. Uh, and then on 55 Hudson Street, similarly, the base of the building shown in white uh, with the towers shown in gray. But these towers offset from one another, uh, allowing them to sort of weave together, almost interconnect uh, and reinforce the uh, uh, directionality to the, to the waterfront, uh, to those view, view corridors to the waterfront. And here we're showing that sort of covered uh, most of the setback and step back uh, requirements for the site. Uh, I'll just highlight a few of them. Uh, you can see that we're uh, 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 almost 67 feet back on the right on the right hand image at 50 Hudson. We're almost 67 feet back to the base of the building along Morris Street Plaza at a step back uh, from the base of the building to the tower of 35 foot four inches. Uh, also set back and step and step back of 66 foot five inches from the Hudson River walkway. Uh, and 31 foot 10 inches uh, from uh, Hudson Street, the light rail. Um, so that's the, that is the, the uh, 50 
Hudson Street site. Um, the towers are sort of located at the corners, the opposite corners of the site, anchoring the blocks, also allowing uh, more light and air to pass through the buildings. Uh, the massing, uh, you can see here in plan, the towers are stepped. They have a step profile, uh, relieving uh, uh, some of the bulk of the mass uh, and also interlocking them uh, between the blocks of 50 and 55. Uh, at 50 Hudson Street, Matt also mentioned the raised plaza uh, and uh, Tom Carmen from Maleo Bauer. Carmen will uh, talk about the landscape uh, architecture here, but that is a raised plaza. Uh, approximately six and a half feet in elevation from the waterfront walkway at the intersection of Sussex and the walkway. That's the highest grade change. Uh, and as you move south around the uh, waterfront walkway and then east along the Morris Street Plaza, the grade is sloping up uh, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so by the time you're at the intersection of Morris and, and Hudson Street, you're up at around elevation 11, 11 and a half. This is a section outlining the program of the building. It's color coded, uh, make it easy for everyone. Uh, the residential use in blue, uh, 705,276 square feet, uh, 924 units. Um, uh, the area shown in yellow, uh, which is building lobbies and amenities for the building, uh, support spaces, bike rooms of 39,107 square feet. Uh, retail, which isn't shown in this section, but uh, uh, delineated there in orange uh, in the mar margin, that is at the grade level abutting the plaza of 12,017 square feet. Uh, and there, uh, the building, the new building sitting on the existing uh, parking garage uh, parking area of 220,781 square feet. The total square footage is 756,400 square feet, and there are 467 spaces in the parking garage on uh, four levels. The height of the building is uh, 476 feet to the top of the screen wall, uh, enclosing the elevator bulkhead and uh, equipment up at the high roof, uh, and then the lower roof levels uh, of, of the volume that uh, step are at elevations 432 foot one and 414 uh, foot seven inches respectively. And then last, the base of the building at uh, 50 Hudson is uh, at uh, is a height of 26 foot one and a quarter <laughs> inches above the raised plaza. This is a view of uh, showing both buildings, the overall rendering of the site uh, with 50 Hudson in the foreground there in between the uh, Hearts Mountain uh, office buildings of 70 Hudson uh, and 30 Hudson, the Goldman Sachs Tower. You can see the step massing here now uh, in elevation. Uh, the buildings are rendered in two different colors of glass. Uh, the step profile giving it a distinct top. Uh, you can also see the little bit of the uh, the new walkway design, uh, uh, really porous design uh, from the plaza uh, or from the walkway leading up to the plaza, really inviting people in and up and onto that, onto that deck and uh, uh, to experience that new great public open space. And I'll, I'll talk about 55 uh, Hudson, uh, but you could see that these buildings are meant uh, to be uh, uh, complement one another in their siting and in their design. This is a ground floor plan of the of 50 Hudson Street. Uh, Matt covered a lot of the service entries. We have electric coming in off of Sussex Street, uh, the existing garage entrance off of Sussex uh, with the low entrance. Um, additionally, we're moving trash uh, here uh, to the loading dock from a uh, space uh, located on the first level of the parking garage via a service elevator. Uh, which is over on the right hand side there just outside of the core in the gray area. Uh, the trash will move over in that network of circulation to the loading dock, be managed at the loading dock and then uh, picked up. Also, uh, there are retail bike spaces allocated here uh, for the retailer. Uh, and I'll show you the spaces allocated for the tower uh, as we move through the presentation. Uh, in yellow is the lobby of the building. 
um, just at that intersection of Sussex and the Hudson River walkway. Uh, you can see the building entrance there, a new cut in that uh, in the planter bed. Uh, allowing the plaza really to extend down to the water, water front walkway, really inviting uh, the public up and, uh, and uh, to pass through uh, this great new public space, which uh, is just a little over an acre. Uh, and it's surrounded uh, on, uh, surrounds the building on three sides. And as Matt said, it's raised to an elevation of 14 and a half to mitigate the uh, potential for flood. Uh, but it also, uh, you know, pr provides a sort of middle zone uh, for people to kind of overlook the walkway and lower Manhattan and the waterfront. And you can see here in this image, and Tom will go through this in detail in this landscape presentation, uh, that the site is porous on all edges. And what I mean by that is that it's accessible uh, from all sides, uh, from the waterfront walkway, from the Morris Street Plaza, and from uh, uh, the uh, Hudson Street, the retail corridor of Hudson Street. Last on this slide, um, it was mentioned, I'm sorry, uh, Jessica, I apologize. I stopped for a breath, will you go back? Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, Matt mentioned the elimination of the vent structure that's on the walkway. You can see here the space is labeled garage exhaust. The intent is to move the garage exhaust to a location within the building, bring it up in the building and discharge uh, through a louver on Sussex Street. That eliminates that super stack uh, that exists currently at the intersection of Sussex and the waterfront walkway. There's a view of that great new public open space of over an acre. You can see in the foreground there, the steps of the bleacher seating leading down to the walkway, leading up to the building uh, area, the building that we call the porch, uh, the, the columnar sort of arcade at the base of the building. Uh, and then the, uh, the building of 50 Hudson Street there uh, in the foreground rendered in two colors of glass, a light blue and a dark blue. Uh, and in between uh, 50 and uh, 50, um, 50 Hudson and 30 Hudson, you can see in the background there 55 Hudson, excuse me, on axis with that new public space. This is a view of the entrance, the new entrance, looking at the building from the Paulus Hook Ferry Terminal. Um, you can see here the, the steps leading up. Uh, to that raised plaza, that that again is the uh, the highest elevation, uh, and it tapers off as it moves around to the south and east. Uh, steps leading up to the building to that area that we're calling porch. Uh, steps and bleacher seating uh, over on the left, inviting folks to just sit and uh, enjoy the great views, uh, and also provide access uh, through the site through the plaza. And like I said, Tom will go over the uh, specifics of the landscape design of the plaza, but one area, you know, and there are different, different things happening on that plaza, different, different levels, uh, different types of shading under trees and landscape. Uh, but the end of the plaza we've left open as a flexible space. And we're hoping that it can be programmed uh, seasonally. Seasonally, uh, uh, here we're showing a farmer's market uh, and, and you can see in this view, the elevation, uh, you're slightly higher than the, the waterfront walkway, but you're still under the canopy of the trees looking out to the waterfront uh, and lower Manhattan. This is the first parking level uh, below grade. The ramp coming down uh, is cut off there in the center of the page. Uh, under the ramp, we're proposing uh, to accommodate the new bike storage for the building of 466 bikes. Uh, also the trash chute of the building of the residential building terminates at this level in the light gray area where it will be compacted, uh, moved into containers and then brought up in the service elevator uh, to that network of service hallways that I showed you earlier on the ground floor and stored at the dock for pickup. Um, and here are those garage exhaust locations that dovetail with the uh, locations in the new building, allowing that discharge to happen on Sussex Street and eliminate the vent structure that's at the walkway. 
There are four levels of this garage, I'm sorry, and 467 parking spaces. This is the second, uh, the third floor of the building. Actually, this is the amenity floor uh, for the residents, uh, lounge type spaces and uh, outdoor spaces uh, that they can enjoy on the rooftop of the base of the building. And the typical apartment floor, this floor actually stacks, it's floors four through 40 in the building. It's color coded uh, to show the mix uh, that we have of apartments in the building. We have two bedrooms that are shown in the darkest blue, uh, working to the lightest, which are studios. Uh, there's 28% studios, 48% one bedrooms, 24% two bedrooms, 924 total apartments with an average unit size of 680 square feet. At the top of the stack of apartments is another common space or common floor for the residents. Uh, uh, to be programmed, but uh, you know, lounge type or co-working type spaces at the roof uh, with access to a terrace, uh, which is partially landscaped. Uh, and here you can see this is where the volumes of the building and plants sort of separate uh, from one another. And over all, all the way over on the left-hand side of this image is the way we're maintaining the building. It's a rail mounted building maintenance unit, which will travel along the inside of the parapet of the lower volume and there'll be a similar piece of equipment on the upper volume to maintain the facades of the building. The building materials, uh, we, you know, we're envisioning these buildings and separating those volumes in a, a light blue and dark blue glass um, at the base of the building, of course, uh, for uh, retail tenants and lobbies, a uh, clear vision glass uh, complemented by uh, stone uh, stone paneling, uh, granite panel, uh, and then complementary metal colors and uh, medium uh, light gray and silver palette. And here, just uh, keyed to some of the renderings that I've shown you already are the materials uh, that we've just seen, the light blue glass uh, that actually favors the, the waterfront side of the building. Uh, the dark blue glass, which is on the inland side of the mass of the building, uh, the silver column covers, which are exposed uh, at the rooftop of the base of the building and also under the, uh, the porch of the building, uh, and some of the granite and stone of the base of the building. The clear glass storefront of the building lobby, building retail, the uh, the stone paneling and granite of the base surrounding the storefront, uh, the silver metal of the column covers and the light blue glass uh, on the building tower. And finally, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, at, the, at the step profile at the top of the building, the stepping sort of giving it a, a distinction on the skyline, we're proposing to illuminate uh, the top portion of the forward volume of 50 Hudson Street with a LED strip that's uh, integrated into the wall system or facade system of the building, really marking it on the skyline. And that, that concludes the 50 Hudson Street presentation. This will lead into the 55 Street, uh, uh, 55 Hudson Street. Uh, Mr. Fisaro, before we get any further, when you go through 55, can you just, now that we've given them the overall picture to the board, unless they have questions, can we stick to the the distinction slides here as it relates to 55? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So here, 55 Hudson Street, the inland block uh, uh, shown in yellow, uh, 80,586 square feet or 1.85 acres with similar goal for stitching together the neighborhood. Uh, uh, the four photos on the left are really, uh, I think the, the ones that show 55 Hudson Street site, uh, you can see it up there on the upper left in the foreground, right, uh, right. The center on the right, in the middle on the left and uh, against Paulus Hook on the lower left. Uh, here's that combined site plan again, uh, 55 Hudson Street. Um, here we have, uh, two new uh, urban 
plazas, one at the intersection of Morris and Green Street, uh, which is just under a thousand square feet uh, at the you know, welcoming and uh, enhancing the pedestrian connection from uh, Paulus Hook to the waterfront. And then the other along the retail corridor of Hudson Street, along the full frontage of, of, uh, of Hudson Street. Uh, you can see the base of the building there in white, uh, which is a street wall building reinforcing the urban grid uh, and the towers, which uh, anchor the uh, intersecting corner of Morris and Hudson. And I think what's important to note here, again, we're meeting all the step back and setback requirements and Matt has sort of covered those. Uh, but right, one, of right. the, one of the big step backs is uh, almost 100 feet back uh, from Green Street from the tower. I think that's an important one. In the section of the building at 55 Hudson Street, this one is a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, 820,000 square feet, uh, 820,058 square feet of residential apartments, 1,017 units, uh, 47,790 square feet of amenity, lobby, bike rooms, uh, and like uh, parking on four levels of 138,785 square feet and retail of uh, just under 63,000 square feet, 62,749 square feet. A total area of 930,597 square feet and 378 parking spaces on four floors. And you can see here in the section, even though it's diagrammatic, you can see how the tower transitions down to the base, how the step back uh, from Green Street allows the garage to transition transition scales uh, between the the uh, 55 Hudson Street site and the residential buildings of Paulus Hook, uh, and similarly uh, on the right the outline of 50 Hudson, uh, which allows the inland site to be taller and stepping down uh, both buildings on 55 and 50 50 Hudson stepping down toward the waterfront. The height of the building is 637 feet, six and a quarter inches to the top of the screen wall, encompassing all the mechanical equipment and the elevator overrun uh, and the lower rooftops at 593 seven approximately and 573 foot seven. Uh, also approximately there's a quarter of an inch in there, uh, not accounted for. Okay. Good. And here the overall rendering, again, the inland site separated in two volumes really uh, suggesting a kind of interlocking or weaving of the two buildings, uh, really clean, simple, modern design uh, rendered in two colors of glass, uh, one volume sort of lifting up uh, taller than the other to create a distinct top, uh, the step top. Uh, and this top is also going to go next. Let's go, yeah, let's go to the, okay. Yeah, it is the plan of plan of the ground floor plan of 55 Hudson Street uh, service entrances along Sussex, uh, garage entrance, loading entrance, bike spaces along the loading dock uh, for the retailer, uh, uh, retail surrounding all streets, Sussex, Green, Morris, and Hudson Street, uh, fronting the new plaza on Hudson Street, which is about 4,500 square feet, uh, and then the uh, Green Street Plaza over on the lower left there, just under a thousand square feet or 977 square feet at the intersection of Green and Morris. And then the lobby of the building anchoring the corner of the site there shown in yellow. Uh, so really all active uses, mostly all active uses at the, uh, at the ground floor plane, the lobby anchoring the building uh, at the corner. Um, and here uh, with respect to trash, we're bringing it down uh, to the room we're showing in the center uh, chute terminates here at the ground floor, loaded in containers and moved to the dock uh, for pickup. And Matt had mentioned the three loading bursts already uh, off of Sussex Street. And similarly, uh, the buildings 70 Green and 77 Hudson on the north side of the street uh, have loading and service entrances. So ours are opposite uh, theirs. So Mr. Fasar, why don't we go now to the materials and... Um and the, the okay. crowning of the building. Great, yeah, I mean, these, uh, yeah. great, go ahead. You wanna advance through, that's the entrance of the building showing the base, that's the uh, intersection at Paulus Hook. Um, the materials uh, of the building are the same as uh, 50 uh, Hudson Street. The only difference here is the, is the masonry base of 55 Hudson 
shown there on the left, the gray brick. You can see it here uh, in this image on the right hand side, the gray brick masonry, the metal screening of the garage, the transparent retail storefront and the entrance uh, of the, to, the, to the building at the intersection of, of uh, Hudson and Morris. This is that new plaza created at the intersection of Morris and uh, Green Street, uh, pulling across the, the way and down toward the waterfront. Uh, you can see the scale of the building here, uh, complementary to the scale of the neighboring buildings clad in the brick masonry, the gray brick masonry. Uh, there are apartments and retail at Front Green Street and also Morris Street and the clear vision glass of the retail storefront. Similarly, this will be distinct at the top with the integrated LED lighting uh, at the top of the building at the area, the step, highlighting the step profile. Okay. I think that's... That concludes my, my presentation. Okay, Chairman, this, that concludes our part of the architectural presentation. All right, thank you, Council. Um, Mr. Fasara, I don't know if I heard it if you presented it um how is trash being handled at 55 hudson at, at 55 hudson the, the there's a trash chute on the typical apartment floors uh that trash chute is terminated at the ground floor uh where the it's compacted uh managed in uh, uh containers and then brought to the loading dock for pickup so it's all managed internally Okay, so pickup on both 55 and 50 uh, is internal. There's no garbage put out on the street, correct? From the loading dock, as far as I know, it would be it would be it would be from the from the inside. Yes. Okay, understood. Um, I don't know if the owners has all their arrangements in place for the carting and hauling, well, well, company, but that's the idea. Yes. Okay, understood. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Fasaro? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fasaro. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Fasaro. Um, Chairman, if it's okay, I'd like to call up Tom Carmen, sure. who's our licensed last landscape architect. Hi, Tom. Good I'll start again. Do you swear any testimony Thanks. you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Sure. My name is Thomas S. Carmen, C A R M A N. Thank you. Mr. Carmen, good evening. Uh, also, we've qualified you in the past. Your license is current tonight as a landscape architect. It is, Chairman. Okay, thank you, sir. You're qualified. Great. Thank you, everybody. Well, Mr. it's a Carmen. pleasure to be here this evening. Okay, go ahead. This evening, I'll provide an overview of the landscape and lighting improvements for the plaza, the streetscape, and the exterior recreation amenities. This graphic that we have in front of you is the composite graphic that layers in both 50 and 55 Hudson goes right up from the street level, right up to the, uh, to the amenity deck. As the other professionals have done, I'll focus on 50 first and then um, discuss 55. So the next slide, <clears throat> this is the uh, same orientation as what you've been seeing with Sussex Street at the top. Um, and we're very pleased to, uh, to review this streetscape in which depicts um, all the, uh, the, the hardscape treatments, planting uh, per the Sasaki guidelines, which are part of the Colgate redevelopment plan in terms of the granite curb, the decorative pavers, scored concrete, and even the site lighting right down to uh, the requirements of specific fixtures um, along Hudson Street, and then single-headed fixtures on the other frontages. Bike racks also located along the streetscape Street trees are all um, in keeping with uh, and in compliance with the 2018 Jersey City forestry standards in terms of the varieties, the locations, as well as the planting details. Uh, plant beds transition the grade um, and they define uh, pedestrian and gathering areas. A mix of deciduous and evergreen shrubs with perennials and ornamental grasses are located to both complement the architecture as well as define the areas. By positioning the building on the northern side, um, the plaza becomes a natural extension of the Morris Street right-of-way, providing a very strong connection uh, to the waterfront walkway. 
create change, creates the interest and defines the spaces. And overall, the plaza space has been designed to provide flexibility um, and be transformed for seasonal use. It's publicly accessible 24 hours a day. So the next couple of slides that we're gonna look at, you're gonna see some 3D views of the public plaza. And in these views, um, just note that we've depicted the architecture kind of as a white box so you can focus on the, um, the landscape architecture. Here, if we were to cross Hudson Street heading towards the waterfront walkway, we see a mid-level uh, plaza where we step up a few steps from elevation 11 up to uh, 13 and then more steps bringing us up to uh, the retail plaza, overall plaza space at 14.5. There are ADA ramps just a little bit further down, um, providing uh, comfortable access up to these areas. The next view. Here is the, uh, the, the plan view in the lower right shows. We've moved a little bit further um, to the east, almost right at the waterfront walkway. We can see the waterfront walkway right to the uh, to the to the right hand side of this image, and then the raised uh, plaza on the left hand side. Here, there's a midway, um, a mid walkway that leads to the to the stadium seating. And moving to the next image, we see a view of that stadium seating. So here we're down at elevation eight, the waterfront walkway, a few uh, levels of the sitting steps bringing us up to the top of that at 12.5, and then further up to the 14.5 elevation. Our last view of, uh, now we're on the, uh, the northeastern side, looking back at the building. Here we see the waterfront walkway on the left-hand side, stairs making our way up to that mid-level, and then ramp access up to the, uh, to the upper level of 14.5. As this image uh, moves off to the right-hand side, there's a, a, a ramp ADA access making its way down to Sussex Street. <clears throat> Next image. This is actually um, submitted uh, L10 within the landscape set, identifying all the hardscape materials, um, all the materials compliant with the Sasaki guidelines, uh, appropriate for urban plazas such as this. And then we also uh, indicate the amenity levels coming up through the building. So a real high level of, uh, of exterior amenities proposed for the, uh, the building. And then our next slide. So this is again drawing L11. So a plan that was submitted to, within the set. And this uh, depicts all the planting areas and uh, down at street, as well as the green roof areas that go towards the green area ratio, which I'm happy to say we are in full compliance with. Lastly, this is a, a, an image that you previously saw, moving to the next slide. And uh, we're just thrilled at the, uh, the, the, this waterfront treatment as it um, progresses to the, uh, the plaza space and how it works with the adjacent open space. So now if we could, let's move to 55. So this is again, that same composite plan. And now we're gonna focus on the plan on the, uh, the left-hand side. Next image zooms in to 55 Hudson. All the same treatments that we spoke about in terms of hardscape treatments, lighting, all consistent with Colgate Redevelopment Plan, Sasaki guidelines, and the uh, 2018 Jersey City Forestry Standards. <clears throat> Here we will share two different views. The next image is a view of the plaza at Morris and Green Street. So this is if we had just crossed Green Street heading down Morris, you can see the, uh, the sidewalk with the tree canopy. And then at the just under a, a thousand square foot plaza, we have a seat wall um, that transitions the grade. So we have an accessible access on the left-hand side as well as a set of stairs um, towards the center of that graphic. Moving to the next image. Now here we've moved down, we're at um, Hudson Street. So we're looking back at the Hudson Plaza, 
um, the expanse of the, the setback from the sidewalk or from the curb line to the building face provides a very comfortable retail plaza where you can see that we've incorporated some, some seat walls with some wood toppers to kind of warm up the space and then some lush planting. Planting also is designed as a rain garden, so um, has, a, has a good stormwater benefit to it as well. Both of these plazas are open and accessible to the, uh, to the public 24 hours a day. Now I will move to drawing L9. This again, this is the same, this is a submitted plan that uh, depicts the materials down at street level, as well as the high level of amenities up at the amenity deck and rooftop. And then lastly, this evening, we're going to move to drawing L10. This is another plan that shows our compliance with uh, the city's green area ratio. That provides an overview of the landscape and lighting improvements for both 50 and 55. Thank you, Mr. Carmen. I, we don't, I don't have any additional questions, Chairman of this witness. Okay, thank you, Mr. Carmen. Uh, Commissioner, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Carmen? Just one thing, Mr. Carmen. You had one slide that showed the entranceway to 50 green. You showed the steps, and then you mentioned that there would be ADA accessible ramping, which I think is great. Uh, my question is, is, is it, it, the, you, it's like a wall with some grass uh, closest to the street, and then you've got a space, a concrete space uh, in the middle, and then green on the other side. Might it be possible to move that green that's closest to the street, uh, make it equal uh, width, and move it uh, and blend it into the other patch of grass, and then maybe have like just a, that whole area where it be would, I think would make it more inviting to the public and it would even give a, a broader invitation, especially if it was ramped out, like a, uh, uh, for those who are uh, you know, physically challenged. Just so that, um, I'm sorry. Com Commissioner, I appreciate the, uh, the, the comment question. Um, so at that intersection of, of Green and Morris, I may not have explained it accurately enough, um, from Green Street, that opens right up to a larger plaza space that um, is associated with the architecture and any retail within there. Um, there are seat walls that either focus into that space or there are also seat walls along the streetscape edge itself, so along the sidewalk. So we feel that the design there really provides a good balance of allowing somebody to sit within the space, but also if somebody's just moving along the streetscape to pause over there as well. Word, I think that strikes me as balance. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, anybody else, any questions? For Mr. Thank Carmen? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Carmen. We appreciate your time. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to try to be quick with these last two witnesses. Uh, we're going to call our traffic engineer, Carl Panky. I'm here. Hi, Carl. Sorry, Ian. Do you swear any testimony you give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. For the record, could you state and spell your name, please? Sure. Our name is Carl with a K, Penke. P is in Peter, E H N K E. Thank you. Mr. Penke, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past as well. Your yes, you have, and my license is in good standing. Great, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you, Mr. Penke, uh, you were retained by the client to do traffic impact studies on 50 and 55 Hudson, is that correct? Yes, in accordance with the requirements of uh, Jersey City. And can you please uh, go through your analysis and conclusion on both 50 and 55 as it relates to traffic impact? Yes, uh, very briefly, uh, we did prepare a combined traffic study since they both generate traffic and influence each other. Uh, we prepared that study in accordance with the requirements of Jersey City, and that has been submitted to your professionals uh, uh, for review. Uh, basically, we studied the uh, access locations and the adjoining uh, intersections that are most impacted uh, by this project. Uh, you know, from a traffic standpoint, you know, as was stated earlier this evening, these is, this is basically completing the vision that was started 30 years ago uh, with the redevelopment plan. 
and the redevelopment plan, uh, you know, in it, in its entirety, basically addressed pedestrian circulation, traffic, and 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 so forth. And one of the key elements of this project area and the redevelopment area is its ability to capitalize on uh, the mass transit in the area, the ferry, the path, uh, the light rail that didn't exist back then, but has to come to fruition and, and is doing uh, what it needs to do. Uh, and uh, these projects are, are oriented to that, as you as you've heard from the prior professionals. Uh, it, there's a, a high level of pedestrian amenities uh, connecting uh, the pedestrian paths to the waterfront, to the to the uh, to the path station, to the light rail stations. All of that uh, providing accessibility and mobility for the future residents uh, of these buildings. Uh, the project access uh, loading is from Sussex Street in accordance with the plan, lower order street, uh, to avoid any major disruptions on the primary streets in the, in the area. Uh, the driveways are, per the traffic study, projected to operate at, uh, at good levels of service, uh, and uh, we, we are not finding any sub substantial impacts to the operations of the, the adjacent uh, area signals. They're, they're all fairly efficient signals. Uh, and uh, accommodating the movement of vehicles. So uh, from a traffic standpoint, uh, I think the project really uh, capitalizes on the uh, foresight and vision that was created with the original, with the original plan and uh, should really close out uh, this section of the city. And that would complete my testimony. Thank you, Mr. Pecky. I, I have nothing further. All right, thank you, Mr. Penke. Uh We had a question earlier from Commissioner Torres about uh, the, uh, sure. If on the garage, the garage driveways. The, the only thing I'd say with that is these garage driveways are, are no different than what you're used to in this portion of the city. Uh, all of these buildings in this area are, are basically serviced by garages. Uh, the way they're designed is, is on the exit. There's stop control at the, the uh, building facades to provide visibility to uh, to pedestrians walking along the sidewalks, and, and obviously the motorists are subject to uh, uh, giving the right of way to the uh, to the pedestrians. I don't think any special alarm treatments needed. I'd also suggest that that may not be a very pleasant experience in the pedestrian environment. Uh, so uh, from that standpoint, I don't think there's anything specific uh, from uh, that that's really needed. That uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, addressing that, that doesn't already function well in the area. Okay, understood. Um... Commissioner Torres, do you want to add anything? Do you have another question? Well, just to um, just to clarify that, um, Evan Lester, um, that was a question that was asked by Doctor Desai. Uh, oh, I apologize. Uh, yes, no, I, no I problem. But in, in <laughs> reference though, to the, in reference to the comment that was just the statement that was just made, um, we have lights and some type of warning signs throughout. Jersey City and most high-rise buildings that go up, um, cars yeah, come onto a sidewalk area first. Yeah. Uh, yeah if, if, if you have a ten-foot setback or fifteen-foot setback of a sidewalk, you're gonna have a large area. That we, we've um, requested this before, so it's not like it's not um, the first time this this um, concept of putting a light or some type of alarm was brought up in the Jersey. City. Commissioner, I just my client's willing to see what can be done that or address that, Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Torres and Dr. Desai. Um, uh, agreed. This is um, you know, some kind of an exit alarm at, at that garage is uh it's something common that we ask for. Um believe me, I wish every car stopped for pedestrians and uh you know, I don't even want to get into it. Um we understand yeah, that it will be addressed. Yeah, we would appreciate if there was some kind of an alert to pedestrians that there is a car coming that they can, you know, keep their eyes open. Uh, but again, it is obviously on the, the onus is on the car owner to stop for pedestrians. Um, I would assume there's going to be some kind of signage inside the garage uh, alert, you know, besides the stop sign, but alerting any drivers that they're crossing the sidewalk to watch out for pedestrians? We could do I that. Yes, we could do that. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, Dr. Desai, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. Um, 
do you want, you have any other questions, Mr. Panky? Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's continue on. Uh, well, Chairman, this is my <coughs> last but not least, or my final witness is uh, Mr. Ed Colling, <coughs> who will test. <coughs> um, so I'd like to call him to testify as to the planning and as of right nature of the project, both for fifty and fifty-five. He's running testimony you give tonight. It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, yes, I do. And for the record, could you think about your name, please? My first name is Edward. My last name is Colling, K-O-L-L-I-N-G. I'm a licensed professional planner, and my uh, license is current and up to date. All right. Thank you, Mr. Colling. You answered my question, and uh, you're qualified again. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Colling, uh, you've been engaged by the, by the developer to do a zoning analysis for these properties? Uh, yes, I have been. And you're familiar with the Colgate redevelopment plan? I yes, very familiar. And it's and all of its requirements. Yes. <clears throat> so, in your opinion, there's been a lot of testimony as to the as of right nature um, of these towers, both of fifty and fifty five. Uh, can you walk the? In your opinion, is is the are these as of right under the Colgate plan? Um, yes, yes, they are. Based on the testimony that you've heard from the engineer, these are conforming uses, conforming uh, FAR, height, unit count. In fact, I believe that number 50 is a slight, slightly less number of units. Um, same thing with, uh, with, with 55, they have a conforming number of units as well as the FAR and the height. The setbacks all conform. And in fact, for instance, on 55, the tower is stepped back quite a distance from Green Street to respect the lower scaled neighborhood that's to the to the west. Um, in addition to the conformance with all the bulk standards that it, and the use standards, uh, I'd point out that there's uh, there's a there's a creation of a lot of new open space, large pedestrian plaza along Morris Street, improvements to how the building at 50. Uh, Hudson Street uh, uh, addresses the, the waterfront walkway. Um, on same thing with 55, there's open space along uh, Hut, uh, Hudson Street, as well as the corner of Green Street and Morris. These are all consistent with the requirements of the redevelopment plan and the goals and objectives um, as well. And you've heard testimony to that effect from the landscape architect and even how the buildings are oriented and their design being more slender in, in, uh, in, the, in width and therefore being able to uh, provide better um, uh, view corridors, air, open space, again, as testified to by the architect. So these, all these aspects not only are consistent with the uh, requirements of the, of the master plan, of the Gold Cape Redevelopment Plan, but also are consistent with the goals and objectives of the plan. Um, what, what, what this plan will do is will help to reestablish the streak and grid system, which is one of the goals and objectives of the plan. The creation of a multifaceted waterfront development was a goal and objective of the plan. Also the creation of a network of public open spaces that you've heard that's testified to is all part of, part of the plan as well as creation of this new contemporary image as described by the architect and the other uh, professionals. Um, and that also holds true for the preservation and reestablishment of view corridors. Um, I want to conclude simply by, by saying that uh, this plan has a, has a lot of history, has a lot of history to it. And the goals that have been um, expressed really were to react to what was a closed industrial complex that Colgate occupied on this site for probably more than, more than a century. Uh, Colgate in the 1980s decided it was going to close the Jersey City plant. And that's when the planning was started by Colgate. And then working with the city planning department created the Colgate redevelopment plan, which was adopted in 1989. So this plan has been uh, implemented uh, over now more than three decades. The planning has gone on for almost 40 years. 
um, that's been done, in my opinion, very successfully. And these two sites now are really the last two sites that complete the picture. So although this is a relatively large project, this is not something that just you know, sprung from the ground. This is something that's been planned for, designed for, and implemented over several decades. And these are the last two pieces of that, of that picture. So I, I wanna just remind the, the planning board about that um, because I think they would understand that um, planning doesn't just happen uh, overnight, that it takes, it takes a while to implement. And you know, this now is the conclusion of a very successful uh, redevelopment plan with what I believe are two excellent and well-designed site plans. Well, thank you, Mr. Colling. I, I don't have any additional questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Colling. Yeah, I appreciate uh, the history on it. I, I was gonna ask you, uh, you know, the year that this was in, envisioned and I'm assuming that uh, you were involved in that plan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I don't recall making any changes since I've been on the board to that area for those buildings. Um, so, you know, I was curious about the history and uh, how far back these buildings were envisioned. Um, okay, I have no questions for Mr. Colling. Um, anybody else, commissioners? Yes, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Um, really, so, uh, not so much a question, but an affirmation of what he's saying. And and to your point, uh, Chairman, I think the background on this for the public is very helpful. And then to the scope of the work, it's not that often that an application comes in. So 150, there are 22 attachments to that application and then 55, 23. That's a lot of work and a lot of detail. So um, I appreciate the history and the detail. Thanks, All right. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, anybody else? Any questions for Mr. Collin? No. No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Collin. We appreciate your time. All right, Thank Chairman. You, yep, I, that's the conclusion of our presentation. Again, um, the development team is eager to continue to work with the city to really bring the bring the the finalization of the Colgate plan. Um, to a close after 40 years and uh, we appreciate the planning board's time this evening and that's all we have all right thank you council um mike do you want to take five before we open up public might be a good time yeah i think it's a good idea thank you okay yeah let's give you a break uh it's 8 42 we'll be back at 8 47 we'll open up public and uh council i'll certainly afford you the right to have a closing statement if you wish after after public comment
All right, if we could come to order again, everybody. Okay, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. See a few hands raised already. Promoted and, Fran Evans. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Thank you. And uh, anybody that wants to comment on these applications, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Fran, if you're there, you can unmute. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, I don't think you're Fran, but uh, I'll swear you in and then you can tell us your name and everything. If my name is Lawrence Nevins, I'm, I'm Fran's Thanks. husband. We, we right. Let me just swear you in real quick. Sure. If you can raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And for the record, can you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? My name is Lawrence Nevins. I'm a resident at 77 Hudson, right across the street from the development area. Thank you. Mr. Nevins, good evening. Uh, we have three minutes for you, sir. Okay, I specifically wanted to make comments on Carl Pinkey's comment about the traffic study. As a resident here, um, he kept referring to the traffic flow, uh, embraces the original vision of the Colgate development area. Uh, when that plan was originally put together for Colgate development, there were two lanes in one direction on Hudson Street, and there were two lanes in the other direction on Hudson Street. With the installation of the light rail, they took those two lanes away. So now Hudson Street only has two lanes, one way that heads to the south and then makes a turn and then heads west. And the other street, uh, what's the name of the other street, Fran? Uh, the other bordering street is a one-way street in the other direction. I uh, should be a two-way street in the other direction, but only two lanes. The point I want to make is that everyone who's going to park and enter these buildings will have to drive the two the two lane road on Hudson Street. So all, all the traffic that's approaching will come, come on to Montgomery. They will turn on to Hudson. There's only two lanes and then have to make the left turn to approach the one building or make the right turn to approach the other building. So the traffic impact on Hudson Street in front of where I currently live will be dramatically impacted. Everyone will have to drive down those two lanes to get to either building. So I think it's, it's not correct to suggest that this is you know, embracing the original plan because two lanes of the road are gone as a result of installation of the light rail. Okay, so, I would, thank you. I would, so I would suggest that needs to be a further traffic study of what this really means with all the additional car traffic in this neighborhood. Okay, thank you, sir. Anything else? Nope, that was it. All right, thank you, appreciate you. Promoted, Erica. Erica, if you're there, you can unmute. Hello, and let me just swear you in if you can raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I can't hear you. You see your lips moving, Erica. There we go. I'm testing one, two. Sorry, it was me. There we go. Computer. There we go. That's good. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll swear you now if you can raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And for the record, can you give us your uh, name, state and spell your name, and give us your address, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Eric Walker. We lost you again when you plug the headphones in. 
trying not to wake her. Um, Eric name is Eric Walker. Uh, residence is 578 Ocean Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey. I am the aide to Councilman Gilmore in Ward F and therefore a uh, aide to the residents of Ward F. Okay, thank you, Ms. Walker. We have three minutes for you. Thank you. Um, so this came to our desk um, just uh, a little over a week ago with a request to have a meeting with the councilman. And um, actually before um, the developers came uh, to request the meeting, um, members of the community came to request a meeting um, because they were actually the ones that uh, told us about the project um, and made us aware that it had made the planning board agenda and it was coming to planning board. So there's a lot of history here that um, we'd love to um, entertain. Uh, we'd love to review and uh, get a better understanding of. I understand this redevelopment plan is old, um, and um, but I, I don't believe these plans are, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I don't believe the, the plans for the building are as old as the redevelopment plan. So I'd like to um, understand the timeline there. Um, I'd like to also understand um, the occurrences, um, like the history, the timeline of the history that um, isn't clear for our office and it isn't clear for the community. I believe the community has many questions um, that they'd like to have answered before they can fully support this project. I don't believe that they don't support development. I just believe that they uh, would like uh, more um, transparency and an opportunity to engage prior to this making the planning board agenda. Um, so um, it, it boggles me how items are able to <laughs> pass from board to board without community engagement. Um, gentrification development should involve the community so they don't feel ignored, so the community doesn't feel displaced or um, uh, slighted. Um, I understand there's been you know promises that they will engage with the community, but I think it will look and sound a lot better had they engaged prior to. Um, so that's my take. I strongly suggest community engagement before this plan moves forward. Um, thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Walker. We appreciate it. Promoted Paige Keck. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can see and hear you. I'll swear you in if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Paige Keck, P A I G E K E C K, at 157 Sussex Street, Jersey City. Thank you. Ms. Keck, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Good morning. I just learned about this issue today. I'm not really sure what you're voting on, um, but if it has to do with with accepting the proposal of the building design, I would request that the community have a chance to review the designs first. My concern specifically is the glass and its impact on the bird population. Um, like to re talk with the developers about using uh, fritted glass or something else so that we can, you know, s stop, s stop the death of our wildlife <laughs> um and also just how it affects uh traffic in the neighborhood and um so i guess i'm requesting that uh we postpone uh, approval of the buildings thanks all right thank you mr keck we appreciate it promoted victoria Hi, Victoria. I'll swear you in. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And if you could, please state and spell your name and give me your address. Victoria Goose, uh, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-A-G-O-U-S-S-E, and I'm at 221 Warren Street. Thank you. Ms. Goose, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Hi, um, and thank you, everybody, for their presentation. I want to start off by thanking Councilman Gilmore for his 
input earlier in the call, it was really necessary. We really just learned about this project a few, uh, a week ago about, I'm four blocks away from this development. Um, I will see it, I will walk, walk by it and interface with it every day. Um, so I think it's really important to receive community input on a project like this. Particularly, I think that for a development that is going to introduce over 2000 households to a neighborhood, there has to be a discussion about the impact of all of those people and all of those families and all of those children and where they will go to school. Um, I think that the community needs an opportunity to comment on what's gonna be happening on the streetscape, uh, the retail landscape, uh, services to the community, infrastructure um, and various infrastructure improvements that will need to happen to that neighborhood in order to support that many people and that many, and that many cars and just overall that, that much economic activity to that area. Um, I believe that the tax implication of all of these improvements will be borne directly by homeowners such as myself, who's experienced a 35% increase in real estate taxes over the past year, but no improvements to the school system and no better prospects to some of the amenities in, this, in the neighborhood. So I respectfully request that this issue be postponed. Um, until the community has had an opportunity to comment. And further, I just don't understand how an approval can be preliminary and final at the same time. Um, it, it really just shows that there was no intention for, for the community's input to be a part of this. So that is my request. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Goose. We appreciate it. Promoted Kashif. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. We can't see you though. If you can turn your video let me, on. Let me start the video. All right, there we go. I see now. I just want to swear you in if you could raise your right, right hand. Yes. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. For, for the record, can you uh, state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Yes, my name is Kashif Chand, K-A-S-H-I-F, last name Chand, C-H-A-N-D. I'm a resident at 66 Morris Street in Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, I am speaking in my individual capacity and not in my professional capacity. Uh, so I'd like Ms. to raise John, a few Before you start, we have three minutes for you, sir. Great. I'd like to address at least three issues here. Um, I think this was very quickly done without any appropriate reach out to the community to discuss the issues that are, are happening. These issues are going to impact one parking around this area. I think we need to have an understanding of how many of the buildings in the area who already have parking lots um, have residents who are seeking parking permits for the adjacent area. Uh, parking in this area has been quite um, difficult to obtain even in the times when you would expect parking to be available. And, and we you know, are, are very concerned about how that parking issue is going to be impacted by the number of residents that will be moving into the tower, into the towers, and the lack of parking to ad adequately address their needs. Uh, I think too, there's another issue with the schooling uh, in the area. It's unclear how all of these individuals are going to send their children to the nearby schools. We're likely going to have to bus more and more children outside of the neighborhood, which doesn't make sense for a, a area that, that has a school. Um, I, I think third, the Colgate plan was made quite some time ago and was not adaptive to the current changes in our environment. I think it's a, a concern and a considerable concern uh, as you see that each year the number of uh, lantern flies are increasing in the area. Scientific studies have shown that these lantern flies um, are attracted to the glass uh, on the side of the buildings. I don't know if you had a chance to eat at Green Hook or any of the local restaurants, but you are essentially covered in lantern flies if you're eating outside and there would be a significant increase in that population. 
arguably that would be a public nuisance created by these buildings as they are on notification of the fact that these glass buildings attract lanternflies. So that is arguably a public nuisance aspect that uh, it would behoove the residents not to pursue. Uh, and, and finally, um, given the, the uh, amount of, of and size of these buildings, it is going to considerably cut off the lighting that is accessible to the buildings in the nearby area. And, and I think that's a concern. I think that this needs to be postponed um, and, and there needs to be a study done as to how this will affect parking, not just the traffic issue um, and how the environmental impact is going to occur given the recent um, swarm of, of lanternflies, which I don't believe was an issue during the Colgate planning initially. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. Ramona Stefano. How you doing, sir? Let me just swear you in if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Stefano, S T F A. N O D J N A D I G N U A. I live in 77 Hudson, which is just across the, the street of the development. Mr. De Genoa, uh, sorry, De Genoa. Uh, good evening. We have three minutes for you, sir. Thank you. I also would like to, uh, for the record, to make sure that everybody understands that I am the president of the board of 77 Hudson, also the treasurer of the Master Association of Hudson Green, which is a site six of Colgate Center Association. I would like to thank everybody for the presentation. It was very thorough. Uh, obviously, we are very supportive because obviously it will beautify the uh, neighborhood and will create a further enhancement of the image of the waterfront in Jersey City. Of course, we also have concerns as everybody. We are a community. We're a big community for under 20 units, 77 Hudson. Um, since the environmental concerns that have been raised in the past, as well as the light concerns as also shared by the community since uh, the south side of our building and the southwest side of our building will be negatively impacted by the two towers. We know, we knew that uh, the developments were there when we bought here. Of course, we would have preferred to see probably a 99, another 99 Hudson with one tower only, so not to block the views towards the Liberty Statue, but we understand that uh, this is a development that nobody has the right to view and therefore we are supportive regardless. Having said that, the question that I have is just a confirmation. Um, nobody has mentioned the word condos in the presentation. Uh, are you in a position to confirm at this point that the uh, developments will be uh, rentals and not condo? Um, do you have any other questions for council, sir? And we'll get them. We'll get them answered for you. I also have another question, a uh, minor question on whether the presentation that's been shared tonight with the public is gonna be uploaded or is already been uploaded somewhere so for consultation. Um, yeah, that presentation uh, will be up on the data portal. Uh, the, the site plans are up on the data, port data portal currently. That's where the board uh, goes to find everything and reviews um, and uh, Mr. Garcia, can you confirm that there are rentals or condos at this point? I'm just waiting for confirmation, but I will have that shortly. Okay, uh, let's move Mr. on with the comment and we'll get that answered for you. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, Chairman, I just, it's their rental projects. Okay. And, and Mr. Stefano, um, the, on the agenda, uh, which provides you with the Zoom link for this meeting, there is a link that uh, provided under these agenda items, which will direct you to where you can download uh, the submitted materials for these applications. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Promoted Melissa. Yes, hi. Good evening. Hi, Melissa. Let me just swear you in before you go, if you could raise your right hand. Yes. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Sure. Melissa Sexton, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, -S Sexton, S-D-X-T-O-N. And I live at 77 Hudson, um, right across from the development. 
Thank you. Ms. Sexton, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Yeah, sure. So uh, just a couple of things. Um, one, I wanted to echo uh, several of the other um, speakers who are respectfully asking for more time for the community to consider the proposal. And just for the record, I disagree with our, our president in terms of his sort of representation that 77 Hudson would fully support uh, the project. So um, uh, I have a couple of points uh, to make. One is um, I understood when I purchased in the building 11 years ago, that 50 Hudson was zoned as a commercial um, property and not residential. And that factored into my decision to, to purchase because I knew that 30 Hudson Goldman's large commercial building was not full at the time. So um, I just wanted to, to make that point that um, it seems like there was a change made um, that we were unaware of. And then the second point I wanna make is around, there's been a lot of discussion around the Colgate development plan. And I think that a lot has changed since that was established. And the most important thing, and it was mentioned by some other speakers, and I just wanna emphasize the point around parks, green space, and trees, um, and specifically Colgate Park to the south of the Goldman Building remains undeveloped, which is unbelievable that the discussion is centering around um, developing two commercial high-rise buildings, and yet a small parcel of land just adjacent to Goldman's building is still undeveloped with no trees. So I just would ask that this group consider the impact on the environment and an open space in the community. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sexton. We appreciate your time. Stephanie Daniels has been promoted. Hey, good evening. Thank you so much for um, allowing us to all uh, have the opportunity to speak. Let me just swear you in before you get going. If you could raise your right hand, do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yep. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Stephanie Daniels, 143 Grand Street. 07302 S T E P E I E D A N I E L S. Thank you. Ms. Daniels, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Thank you so much. Um, I want, I want, I thank you, Melissa, for having mentioned that open space uh, to the south, directly to the south of 30 Hudson Street, because that's a really good example of some of the things that have not happened in the 30 years since the Colgate Master Plan has been changed many times. Um, that was a space that actually Goldman Sachs had committed to developing. And we all know what happened with that. So it's still sitting there um, completely you know, barren. Um, and, and yes, if you don't want to make it, if you want to make a positive impact on the environment with your building, that would be a great way to start. Develop that space as well. Um, I do want to also address, uh, uh, Commissioner Lipsky had asked about um, something about water and, and um, how tall the building at uh, 50 Hudson that is now going to be 40 stories. That building was 12 stories. So whatever impact was, 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 was uh, studied at that point is very different now. And finally, I just want to, this whole evening has been for us, for the neighborhood, about listening to something very dense. And part of it is wonderful. I don't, I don't disagree with developing these sites. Um, but the neighborhood was, was contacted about Honshu's shed, the little shed that's going outside, the little piece of, of 60 feet long and 10 feet tall thing that people are gonna sit in. They were asked to, we were asked to comment. 
I'm a member of the Historic Paul Soak Association. I'm the, I'm the uh, I serve as vice president right now. And we, you know, we all talked about it and we said, yeah, this is great, this is great. But we were given the opportunity. When 30 Hudson was, was going to be built, we must have met, I'm gonna say 10, 15 times. Now I understand that they were asking for variances and abatements and all sorts of things, and that this project is not. But the re there's a respect missing from here when the neighborhood, when Paulus Hook, the little neighborhood right across the street, in case somebody doesn't remember, from this new building is, is being developed and is going to impact greatly on our neighborhood. Not once, not once were we given the opportunity to see these plans until tonight. And, and and try to download from the server with CAD, you know, the CAD PDF, which is really tough to download. And the other thing, I hope this 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 body will think about the lights on the top of the building and make that go away, because that is something that is even now. I mean, it'll be wonderful to look at from New York City, but for the people who live here, not so wonderful. Um, and I really hope this board will postpone this to get all these things into place, particularly some interaction with the neighborhood because there has been zero respect on that level as our councilman said, which I really appreciate everything he said. That is all. All right, thank you, Ms. Daniels, thank we appreciate it. Promoted Faith Lau. Hi, Faith. I'll just swear you in before you go, if you could raise your right hand. Okay. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. For the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? <laughs> uh, my name is Faith Lau, F-A-I-T-H, last name Lau, L-A-U. I'm at 1 Green Street, which is uh, Claremont Cove. Um, Ms. Lau, good evening. Right. Three minutes for you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just say generally that um, I echo, I think I echo all the comments. Um, I appreciate the presentation. Um, I think we we need more time though, in order to give uh, fuller comments. I am president of the Claremont Cove Condo Association, um, and uh, but yet I I speak now in my role just as an individual. As president, I I think that I could probably facilitate um, some engagement with with our building uh, community, which is which is very close to the site. Um, but my comments tonight are just as an individual, given the, the lack of time that, we, that we've had to uh, to review the, the plans. Um, overall, I think there's a, I agree that there's a lot of nice things in the in the presentation. Um, I appreciate uh, Councilman Gilmore's comments as well as Erica from from his uh, from his staff. And I would request that the committee postpone decision tonight until further things can be reviewed. Um, I have concerns about transit, traffic, school capacity, which is already a problem. Um, I, I'm curious about DEP waterfront um, water um, requirements. I know that there was mention of the Jersey City uh, green ratio compliance. So that's that's great, but I'm curious, uh, like confirmation of, of other requirements with regards to permeability and, and absorption of, of water um, from, the, from the green scrape there. Um, I echo the comments about the Colgate Clock Park as well. It's like, you know, there were commentary about the um, kind of celebratory comments about this being the culmination of the of the Colgate Park plan, of the Colgate plan, I guess the, the development plan. So um, in the neighborhood, we would like to know, uh, I, I, I personally, and I'm sure others in the neighborhood would like to know then, what does that mean for the, uh, the Colgate Clock Park? Um, which has not been um, properly remediated or developed as a park. Um, also, um, I wonder about the, there was testimony that, that the sizing of this is as of right to the original plan, um, but uh, my, my understanding had been, as someone mentioned about commercial development on one of the sites, I thought there was a hotel. I'm not personally advocating for it being a hotel, but um, I just, I, I'm confused about the information that's out there about the, the height of the buildings, the number of the uh, units, and um, the accuracy of, of that, um, that, it, that it's uh, as of right and therefore worthy of just being um, pushed through effectively is what it appears to us um, and being approved um, so quickly tonight without further, um, without further review. Um, I think it's a relevant question about um, 
it being rentals. I think that the impact on the community, the impact on our taxes um, and the tax burden that it causes for, for the rest of us, especially in light of recent developments um, is a very relevant one. Thank you, Ms. Lau. We appreciate your time. Okay. Um, Mr. Garcia, if we could address uh, the, the residential use, um, that's a permitted use in the plan as well as uh, commercial, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you, Council. Promoted, Jean Daly. Um, Hi, Jean. I Just confirm for me that you're still on the road from before. Uh, yeah, I still on the road from before. I, I do. I thank agree. You. I will. <laughs> okay. Good evening, uh, Miss uh, Miss Daly. We have three minutes for you. Yes. Um, a lot of people beat me to some of my statements, but some of these questions uh, that, particular Melissa had brought up, I was going to address, and it's that the the gentleman who made the last um, statement as far as expert testimony, stating that the amount of units that they had, et cetera conformed with the Colgate plan. Now the plan's 30 years old and it was not commercial. How can someone testify that in fact, this conforms with that? So there are just some just loose statements that She's frozen. Miss Staley? You're in the audible. And your screen froze. Oh, no. You're back. Oh, I am? Yeah. You cut out at the beginning of your statement about the park. Oh, about the entire thing? You have about three and a half, four minutes left. Thank you. Okay. So the, the point thing I was as speaking about was the, I don't know if you caught this or not, was the statement made by your the gentleman who gave the last expert witness testimony, stating that the uh, the amount of units conform with the master plan when in fact, as we all know, it was formerly a commercial area that was now rezoned as residential. Um, so I'm, I just don't know how that his statement, the accuracy of that statement saying, like I said, the amount of units is the same as when it wasn't residential till recently, probably in the last decade or so. Um, that concerns me very much. I, I really wish that we had proof of that. Um, another thing that does concern me is that the traffic study, the gentleman says the traffic study, the garbage, it, garbage access pickup, people coming in, going out is not gonna be impeded in any way. However, this, that area is part of a larger, larger Paul's Hook, and I live in Paul's Hook, and what used to take me X amount of minutes to get to, you know, ShopRite or Home Depot has, like, tripled. So one, one has to reach beyond that particular development, at least go another block or so, and examine that area and how that's going to be impacted naturally the um, schooling system is a is a real problem and i know that's not part of the planning board um, and also i have grave concern about the failure of the planning board to implement some type of uh, of um, necessary window treatment to save the migratory birds they're migratory birds right now they're in full swing i have seen and photograph several of these dead birds from these collisions. And the problem is with these high rises, because they are on setbacks, we can't see all of the, the victims, tragedies, nor can we grab them and try to bring them to either the Raptor Center in, in New Jersey or sneak them into the Hudson, up to Manhattan. So Ms. that Kelly, is something that does. Thank you, that, that yes. was your time. My now. time up? Yeah. I did pause it while you were frozen. Don't worry. All right. I appreciate it then. I should have spoken more quickly. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. We appreciate it. Promoted Josh Jacobs. Yep.
Hi, Josh. You're still dark over there. Hey, yeah, I see that. I am not sure. You have something over the uh, over the over the camera. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Thank you. All right. I see you yeah, now. Uh, nice to see you on a Tuesday night. I'll swear <laughs> you in. If you can, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll just swear you in. Uh, do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? Joshua Jacobs, 66 Morris Street, Jersey City, New Jersey. Thank you. Josh, good yeah. evening. Um, we have three minutes. If you need a little longer, I'll certainly uh, understand that. And uh, funny thing is, I was planning on coming to your meeting on Thursday. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, I really, I, I respect your time and, and we'll keep it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm here in a personal capacity, not as chair of the zoning board. Um, I, I live a half block from, from where this project will, will go. Um, I, I mentioned to staff um, today, um, I'm not sure how they gave notice to our building. Um, none of the owners in our building received notice. Um, so I'm not sure who they sent it to. We checked with our management association. Uh, other people from the building, I'm sure will mention that issue. Um, I would look at this kind of as a high level issue, um, really. Uh, and focus on two things. One, the, the most poignant parts of this presentation were what stood out to me in the contrast between Ed's comment about how planning takes a lot of time. And people have, ha have, have talked about this. This has been a, a redevelopment zone that's been 40 years in the making. Um, and, and I contrast that with kind of the back and forth with uh, the councilman. And, and I think the councilman and his staff made very, very reasonable um, statements of, the community doesn't know anything about this. We have some concerns. We'd like to discuss it. And the pushback we got from council was, this has to happen right now. Well, plans that need to, that, that take time to develop, that are thoughtful, that are a significant, um, you know, enormous plan on the last piece of open space on the, on the Jersey City waterfront. These are not things to be rushed. This should be months in discussion with members of the community so that we can think thoughtfully about what we need. Other people from the community have raised a lot of points and I'm sure we'll consider, con continue to raise a lot of other points. The couple of things that I haven't heard people mention that I would, I would focus on if I were in your shoes, commissioners, are first, that um, I have a, a high level of concern about the unit mix. Um, I, I think that 75% of the units our, our studios and, and one bedrooms, combined with the fact that this is going to be a rental project, um, th this seems like something that, that is less helpful to the neighborhood um, than, than would be beneficial. Um, the, the second thing I would also look at um, is the size of those units. Um, I, I think that, that I saw that, that the average units were 650 square feet. Um, these are not, these are not uh, you know, families that are going to be moving into those units. So if, if I were reviewing that, um, before, if this was before me, I would certainly be looking at that, that I would want significantly larger unit sizes. I would want two and three bedroom units because those are the type of people you want to be moving into the community. Uh, that, that's where this is. This is across the street from Paulus Hook. Um, so th that would be a significant concern I would have. I would have a concern, as other people have raised, about the fact that this is rental versus condos. Um, I also don't know what, what the retail space would be. Um, and there's a lot of vacant luxury retail space in the immediate area. So I would have concerns and I would ask, you know, what are we proposing to put in there? And is that something that is really necessary or helpful, beneficial to the community? Should we instead have school space, healthcare space, something that these proposed you know, 2,000 plus people would be putting here. Um, the, the next point I would think about is there's already a substantial and, and used fill, full parking lot in this area. Um, so with the additional 2,000 um, units that we're putting here, and I think there's already a parking situation of about 450 parking spots. Are we looking to put up 2,500 parking spots? Because if not, I, I think, again, I would have significant concerns about um, the, the potential impact that would have on the community. And then finally, but most importantly, um, what I would be looking at is 
Again, this is, this is the last piece on the iconic waterfront. What does this structure look like? And, and to me, that's where this, this falls embarrassingly short. This, this, these are two glass rectangles. And I know people talked about setbacks and they talked about open space. This is, a, this is these, are, these are very uninspiring and uninteresting projects. And this is something where I've been very disappointed uh, as a resident of Jersey City, when I look at our waterfront and I compare it to the rest of the, the area in, in greater New York. Look at Battery Park City, look at Long Island City, which was uh, developed along the same timelines as Jersey City. Why can't we have something interesting here? So to say two things, this has to happen right now, we must rush forward and we must rush forward with a pretty uninspiring project. With those two things, if I were in your position, this would be an easy vote no for me. So that's all, thank you. All right, Josh, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Likewise, bye. Promoted Virgie. How's it going? I just want to swear yeah. you in before you get going, okay? If you could raise your right hand. If you swear any yeah. testimony you give tonight, it's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, name is Verghese Stanjan, resident 70 Morris Street. I will underline that everyone has said- Can you um, spell your last name for me, please? Sure, Stanjan is T as in Thomas, H-A-N-J-A-N. Thank you. Good um, evening, sir, we have three minutes for you. Sure thing. Uh, one thing I would like to state that has been stated before is Morris Street and uh, Sussex Street, the backyards, most likely looking at the shadow reports be blocked out uh, for light. And uh, we have to really take a look at the configurations of the buildings. Uh, seems like the buildings were designed for working together, the two buildings, but does it really work with the surroundings? Uh, two, as illustrated, someone had mentioned about the LED lights. Uh, I never imagined I'd be living next to two disco buildings. Uh, also, there's some lot of aesthetics, minor ones that has to be discussed. People did talk about the glass cladding in terms of lantern flies, which is a real big problem, plus birds, but no one brought up the mention of reflected light. You get some artificial reflected light from glass buildings, which is strange. I have uh, weird green uh, reflections right now from some of the high rises we have in my backyard. Uh, one of the aesthetic qualities of the waterfront is the string of trees from Goldman Sachs over to the ferry. The idea of removing some of those trees to make more concrete steps, et cetera. I really question uh, the overall green effect of that. Uh, the traffic, we do have parking lots, two of them. Uh, they talk about parking lot numbers. What's the percentage increase of the parking lot numbers? After I speak, I'd like someone to give me a number on that. Uh, another item will be uh, school infrastructures, like everyone else mentioned, and how fast it's moving. I've only been notified about a week and a half ago through legal letters, try to tell other neighbors about this. And one question I have outstanding, which I'd like someone to answer on this question, is one or two. One, is there any abatements for these properties that are being done? And two, seems like there's a confusion. What is a Colgate redevelopment plan as it is today? Is it retail, is it commercial, is it choice? And is there any density rules associated with that? And I don't believe this should move forward because uh, the street needs to speak and the streets the people and uh, people were not engaged on this project. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, sir. Um, Council, do you wanna address those questions? Oh, well, there, the, there will be no abatement for this project. Um, and it's in the mixed use district of the Kogi plan, uh, which permits this use. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Promoted Quinn Stutzman. Hello. How's it going? I just want to start in before we speak. If we can raise your right hand. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, can you state and spell your name and give us your address, please? My name is Quinn Slotsnick, Q U Y E N. S-L-O-T-Z-N-I-C-K. I am at 66 Morris Street. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. We have three minutes for you. Great, thank you. 
Um, I am the president of our HOA association here in our condo building, but I am speaking as an individual. I will say as the president of our board that we did not receive any notification of this note of this meeting. We did speak with our management company and they checked both their PO box and their physical address and did not receive anything. So would argue that there was some improper notice since we did have to let the residents know rather quickly that this was happening. Um, I want to echo a lot of things I would say, Vergie's discussion of the parking spaces. There are very full lots right now. Uh, what accommodations are being made to both add on residential parking in addition to accommodating that commercial parking that's currently in use. The crowding of the schools, the recent annex for PS16 um, helped alleviate some of the crowding, but now if we're looking to add 2,000 households in, I, I assume that will just uh, aggravate that problem back over again. So it does seem like we don't have a solution or the community has not been approached with a solution specifically for that. Um, there was discussion on design of stitching together the neighborhood and mimicking the neighboring gray masonry. And I think that you're forgetting that the neighborhood is literally across the street, the Paulus Hook Historic Association, and I'm not seeing a continuation that really blends in in any of the design. The open lot that's on the corner of Morrison Green is, is quite small, in fact. Um, I think that the comments about the average lot size, or sorry, average unit size being quite small. I would, I would echo that that is um, under 700 square feet seems uh, like a bad unit mix. Um, and I think that some of the discussions of light, you know, we have not seen any light study on what this would do to um, the light that we receive in our homes. Um, as we think about how the, the, um, these tall buildings would affect what we are, are seeing. Um, thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Promoted Diana Case. Hi, Diane. And you'll just confirm for us that you remain under oath from earlier tonight, correct? Correct. Thank you. Ms. Case, good evening. Good to see you again. We have three minutes for you. Okay. Um, I'm kind of at a befuddlement here as to where exactly to start. Um, I, I'm so proud of my fellow neighbors because we have not had the opportunity to coordinate anything, to really seriously sit down and review everything. And these people have taken their time. They have gone through these, they have listened, gone through what they know or don't know about as far as this plan is concerned, and also have listened to the entire presentation tonight and have wonderful, wonderful comments. Almost all of the things that I was going to bring up have been addressed. I want to talk about the lighting atop the building, which is certainly not something that any of us in the neighborhood want. I was going to talk about the reflectance into the neighborhood. One thing that hasn't been talked about is the ADA access um, for 50, because literally for a uh, disabled person to get into that building, into the building lobby, if you're coming from the uh, exchange place pass station, you have to go a third of the way building down and back and into the lobby. So there's, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be tweaked here. We haven't really talked about bringing not only the 2,100 units here, but we just approved, just were approved for another 400 some units over on Grand Street. How is this poor school 16 going to accommodate all of this when we're already busing six and seven year, seven buses of pre-K and kindergarten students out of the area? It doesn't make sense. We have to talk about this. Both sites have contaminated soil. That was not addressed tonight. How are we dealing with day-to-day -day delivery of the FedEx and the, uh, the fresh direct trucks and the, the guys who come in and do the regular maintenance? How many PTACs are we going to be listening to? There's lots and lots of things that need to be discussed and are all part of engaging a neighborhood for a massive, massive set of buildings. The other thing is that before COVID, I sat down with Tanya, I sat down with Matt and said, hey, you guys need to go back and look at what was approved for 30 and what was approved for 50. And I apologize, I may go over a little bit here because I actually have been part of the history of the, uh, the redevelopment plan. 
Um, I helped the neighborhood got a copy of the original redevelopment plan from, from planning, and we didn't like it. We sat down and spent a lot of time rewriting the entire plan, selling it to our current council people at that time, and getting the vast majority of our revised plan in as the Colgate redevelopment plan. So we've done, the neighborhood has been very involved in this the whole way through. To be told that this is completing the neighborhood's vision, I have to respectfully say no, it is not completing the neighborhood's uh, vision. So I, I could go on and on, and I know you don't wanna hear it, but this needs to be postponed. We need to sit down, we need to bring all of the now neighbors in and really figure out what does work, what doesn't work, what are the things that are, are pressure points for the neighborhood, and really have a community discussion about these buildings, as well as the plans that, uh, uh, Matt, if you really want them, here they are, I got them. And on top of that, guess what? I got the ones when they decided not to build the Crystal Palace too. So, you know, they're there, they're available, even though planning is not interested in looking at them. This is not it's, what it's, was supposed to be there. Thank, we're way over your time. We appreciate I know. it. And it's something that deserves it, Chairman. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Promoted Nirupa Amepithi. Hi there. Hi. How's it going? I'll just swear in before you speak. If you could raise your right sure. hand. Do you swear any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. And for the and record, do you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Ennis and Nancy, I, R as in Roger, U as in Umbrella, P as in Peter, A as in Apple. Last name, U as in Umbrella, M as in Mary, Apathy, A P A T H Y. And home address? Good evening. One we have three minutes for you. I'm sorry. Grand Street. I'm sorry, one more time. 123 Grand Street. Thank you. Good Hi, evening. Everyone. Three minutes for you. Thank you very much. Um, nothing that I can probably say that has not already been addressed by all my colleagues and neighbors here. So I thank everyone for your time and for a very detailed presentation. I'm an ex-finance person, and I actually did work on the other side of financing deals like this. So my point of view today is just largely that. I've lived here in Paula Sook since 2002, both in high-rise buildings and now live in a brownstone. For those of us who live on the ground, it's not an exaggeration that the user experience of what it means to live here has completely changed to the point where parts of it are untenable. I do not have kids, so I'm not dealing with the problems that Diane just described, but we've just been experiencing taxes over the last five years in increase, and it does not correlate to anything that we've seen by, by way of traffic, by way of infrastructure, a path trains, once we're coming out of this pandemic, we're going to experience this. We are the ones experiencing what's going on in Grand Street and Montgomery. So the I completely stand by what Councilman Gilmore and Erica Walker had mentioned ahead of time, because what is a little bit alarming to me is the lack of transparency, because this should have been a co-design process in terms of collaborative input. We are dealing with 99 Hudson Street, 791 units. That is 30% of what you're proposing. 2,400 units. So the fact is that for us to hear about this like overnight or within a week, it's not enough time. Considering that there's been so much thought and planning that has been going on from your side, I think it's the least amount of courtesy that we can expect as residents. As I said, at the end of the day, we are paying through our taxes. We are paying through our devaluation property prices. I frankly do not know what 2,400 units all rentals do to property unit prices as well. And so um, I do not want to go into the litany of what has already been addressed. The only point of curiosity, which will not be answered here at this time, but I'm just throwing it out at large. All of these studies have been siloed. They've been talking about, you know, like the buildings and, and all of it, and all of it is valid, but what about the interaction between high rise buildings coming up at the same time? I know that this has been an old redevelopment plan that has been refreshed, and correct me if I'm wrong, if it is 2018, 99 Hudson is not even a full occupancy. As a community, we still have not seen the full effects of an 800 unit building. And in summary, I also vote for please postponing this and giving us a chance to input on this because we want to coexist as good neighbors to everyone, but we don't want to bear the externalities on our own. Thank you. Thank you, we appreciate your time. Promoted Daniel Sherwood. Hi, 
Hi, Danielle. I'll swear in before Hi. you speak. If you can, do you swear any testimony you give tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> yes, I do. And for the record, uh, can you spell your uh, name and give us your home address, please? Yep. Danielle, uh, D A N I E L L E Sherwood, S H E R W O O D. And I live at 68 Sussex Street. Thanks. Ms. Sherwood, um, good we have three minutes for you. Yep, I just just really appreciate all the thoughtful comments that neighbors have contributed um, tonight, and I support them. I'm um, sort of to add my extra concerns in addition to things that people have already said. Um, just that, just more data that supports the infrastructure of the development of such just big buildings, um, specifically law enforcement and emergency response. Um, I don't see the, any plans for new fire trucks coming to our neighborhood. Um, just around the corner, I know they're like they very frequently have alarms that go off. I think in their parking garage, um, the sound is really disruptive. But also, you have that you have um, fire and police response. And how do you how does that impact um, just everybody's service? I know people have already said it, but the impact on transportation, groceries, schools. Um, just want to make sure that you had neighborhood contribution. So that's it. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Promoted Deborah French. Cameron, is everything all right? Uh, there's some lag. All right, there we go. I see you're good. Yeah, it took a while for it to link up. And Deborah, whenever you're in, you can unmute and turn your video on. There we go. I hear and I see you. I just want to swear you in before you get going, okay? If you could raise your right hand. You swear any testimony you get tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And for the record, could you state and spell your name, please, and give us your home address? Yes, uh, my name is Deborah French, D-E-B-O-R-A-H-F-R-E-N-C-H. I live at 2 Skyline Drive in Jersey City. Thank you. Ms. French, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Yes, uh, I thank you all for hearing me. I'd just like to reiterate what everyone said um, in reference to the residents in the community. Um, we have a lot of associations that uh, we know about. And it would have been very easy to contact them as a whole. And we would have many people there to talk with. And I just don't understand how we missed all of the residents in the community and we build in these buildings around them. We do need to remember the children. They need to move around, they need to get around. And with the buildings, they can't see around those corners. Um, I think we need to come back to the drawing board and plan and listen to the residents because they are the ones that make things happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Promoted Melissa. Hi, Melissa. You look different from last time. <laughs> Yes, hi, I'm Bart Sexton. I'll just swear you in before you speak. Do you swear any testimony you give tonight is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Sir. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your address? Bart Sexton, B-A-R-T, Sexton, S-E-X-T-O-N, 77 Hudson. Thank you. Mr. Sexton, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Thank you so much. And thank you for everybody's time. I think what I want to uh, to just bring to the attention of the board is the percentage of green space per the people in Paulus Hook, right? We are exploding the number of people and yet we have no green space. And I know in the plans, it's very nice with a plaza and a couple of trees, but that is not an active park, a green space, right? We, we don't have anything. These are the last two pieces of land available in Paulus Hook. And for us to be even thinking about putting up two new buildings uh, on those properties without dealing with the significant issues 
this community for a long time. People have talked about the Colgate clock area is yet to be developed, uh, which is meant to be green space. I, I've heard the people, the builders talk about they've met a code standard for green. Uh, I don't know what that means in the broader scope of the Colgate plan, because I know the Colgate plan had a lot of green space associated. So I don't know if other parcels that have been built out didn't meet their standards, but this board should not allow us to, to develop the last two pieces without addressing a glaring need for green space. And Paula Sook, if you compare us to other communities in Jersey City, it's not even close. It's not even close. So I really want the board to consider that there is a plan that addresses before we develop, before we develop the last two incredibly valuable pieces of property in downtown Jersey City to address the fact that we have no green space in downtown Jersey City. The second thing I'd like to say is, is that in the community at large, the all of the things that were just discussed right you know the, the transportation and the, the the amount of cars that are going to be in the area and all of those things you know also need to be addressed and, and 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 make sure that we're all continuing you know down a path that that maintains the living space right that, that that's available to us all so one last thing is is if you think about the eclipse building the ellipse building in newport and everything that happened in newport they built enormous amounts of public space around those buildings. It was part of the design. And because we've been bifurcated in this area, I don't think we've planned it that way. And that's what we need to plan it for, for, right? So when you look at how much they built a 15 story face in, in, on the eclipse, what can we do with, with, the, with the support of these developers, right? To, to do something like that, to build an extension out into the water, whatever it might be, to answer some of these questions, just to offset. We've never had the offset of pu real public space. And again, a plaza with a couple of chairs and two trees, as we have all over these buildings, is not that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Sexton. We appreciate it. Anybody else from public? If anybody else from public wants to comment on these applications, please raise your hand. And once again, if you're calling in, you can press store nine to raise your hand. There's one more. Voting, Catherine M. Hi, hey, Catherine. I'll just swear you in. Yep. You swear in your testimony you give tonight. It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. And for the record, could you state and spell your name and give us your home address, please? Uh, Catherine Moore, K A T H R Y N M O O R E. And I live at 140 Bay Street. Thank you. Uh, one Thanks neighborhood. More. Good evening. In the north. We have three minutes for you. Okay. Um, just to say, someone from outside the neighborhood and who has the same kind of issues uh, that Paulus Hook um, has with high rises, you know, we just have to think about the traffic. We have to think about, you know, is there going to be any public parking within these buildings for people that are going to be visiting the water waterfront, people that are going to be visiting people that live in the waterfront. Um, in these buildings, is it only going to be uh, for private parking, or is there going to be public? Uh, and then, what will this address the parking needs for the commercial buildings down there as well? Um, having one-way traffic on Hudson, I see, is a huge problem, um, only because you know you just end up going around in circles, and that's sort of the problem we have in our neighborhood. Is there's a lot of one-way streets. And so you end up doing a lot of driving to get to uh, places to drive into your parking lots. So like 110 first is one, one example where it's, you know, you've got a one way street and then you have to go, you know, it takes you 10 minutes to walk, drive around the block to pull into the parking garage. This, you're gonna have a lot of traffic coming through the historic district, trying to find new ways to get down to the waterfront and everyone's gonna have to go one way on Hudson and one way on Green. Uh, well, I, no, I think Green's two ways. So that's, that's one godsend you can have for that. Um, but the idea that, you know, Colgate Park is yet to be completed and that this is going to be really small units, um, it's just, it's a lot. And then to have plazas as opposed to green space, you know, we've been given um, plazas in the powerhouse arts district, but we've been given no green space. So when you say along the waterfront, you know, you want all this, all these tall buildings, it would be really nice to have some, um, um, 
some open space that we're proud of, I still would rather go across to um, Manhattan and enjoy the water, uh, the, the waterfront along there because it's much more pleasant than the waterfront along Jersey City. We want people to come here. We don't want people to go across and look back at us. Um, and I think the buildings are uninspired and um, mirror-like and really don't help. And to have a wall, you know, blocking the Southern view um, for so many is, is, you know, something that we've witnessed neighborhood after neighborhood after neighborhood. You know, Toll Brothers is the same thing, slabs that completely block the Southern view um, of people's buildings and, you know, people continue to do that. So, you know, think about the, the, the other buildings that are there um, and not thinking about, you know, what that person's view is of Manhattan, but to the South, that's where the beautiful views are of Jersey City. That's all I have to say. It's just too soon. It's too soon for, for you guys to, to make a decision. All and right. I feel, and I feel so. bad for the people of Paulus Hook that they aren't being given the opportunity. All right, thank you. We appreciate your time. Thanks. I saw one more hand okay. raised. Yeah. Yes, Vincent will be joining us momentarily. Vincent, if you're there, you can unmute. There we go. Uh, yeah, um, in. got kicked out. Well, you're back in. And if you could just turn your video on. Okay. Start my video. Hi, good evening. Hello, Vincent. I just want to swear you in before you speak, okay? If you could raise your right hand. Do you I swear do. any testimony you get tonight? It's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. And for the record, can you state this by your name and give us your home address, please? Vincent Jackaruso, J-A-C-A-R-U-S-O. I live at One Green Street, Claremont Cove. Good evening, sir. We have three minutes for you. Okay. Um, I guess my problem with the buildings, as I see, is that they're 25% of the buildings are two-bedroom units, which are going to bring families in our area. And... I'm sure plenty of people have spoken about this tonight. I'm a little late to the meeting. Um, we don't have any school infrastructure down here. I mean, we're already busing six to seven busloads of people to the west side of Jersey City. And, you know, we, we bring every utility in to make sure we have power, we have light, we have sewer, but you don't bring the Board of Education into the situation to see if the kids can actually go to school. Um, I, I think that's a big problem in our area and nobody really wants to address it. I mean, the building it on uh, 50 uh, Hudson, uh, I think they said has 67,000 square feet of retail. Why can't they just rent that to the city and put in a school instead of doing retail? I mean, it, it would solve two different problems. You'd get a school and you'd get the landlord to make a hell of a lot more money because, you know, they really, the billionaires who are building these buildings really need the money. And we know they're, you know, that's the situation. Um, other than that, we, as a neighborhood association, we were never brought this project until a few days ago. And as our councilman said, you know, it's kind of getting jammed down everybody's throat we normally get at least a chance to talk and meet. And this meeting, we're gonna have the complete project spoken about and pushed through in one meeting. And I don't know, me, I'm in the industry and I didn't have enough time to read all the documents that were sent through. And I do it for a living, I'm in construction. So I know you people who, you know, we're on the board, don't have enough time to read it. You know, what would be a, appropriate would be table the decision for at least one meeting so we could all have our meetings together and go home happy. As best as happy could be. <laughs> Thank you for your time, everyone. 
All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments. And uh, myself and Commissioner Torres are also in construction and it's uh, it's a heavy lift to go through all these plans every meeting, but uh, we make it happen, we make it work. Promoted, Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Katziv at 70 Sussex Street. Hi, right, let me just swear in before you speak. Yes. If you, could, if you swear any testimony you get tonight, it's going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. And if you could just spell your last name for me, please. It's K A T Z I V E. Thank you. Ms. Katsu, good evening. We have three minutes for you. Thank you. Um, I'll be very brief. Um, I'm in the neighborhood just, just adjacent to this project. Um, I came in with concerns. I had concerns as I was listening. And um, having heard the comments of so many of my neighbors um, who raised some really important points, um, I'm extremely supportive of the call to postpone the vote tonight. And I would just like to endorse that, that call. Um, there's just too much here. And um, this was not the forum for an exchange or to have questions answered. So I hope that you'll be persuaded as well to postpone the vote tonight. All right, thank you, Ms. Katz, we appreciate it. All right, anybody else from public? I don't see any more hands raised. Anybody Chair. else from the public, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Chair, see there is no more public. I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, I will go to uh, council first. Mr. Garcia, do you want to uh, make a closing statement at all? Well, commissioners, I just wanted to thank everyone for their time here. As we mentioned, this is you know, essentially an as of right without deviation application. Um, and we believe it's a great project for the city and we rely on our professionals who testified here. And we really thank the planning board for taking the time this evening to hear our application. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you, council. Um, Matt, before I open up for uh, board deliberations, uh, do you have anything you wanna add or would you rather we did board deliberations first? Yeah, board deliberation, if you wish, or or I can head right in. Okay, um, so let's get into board deliberation. If anybody has anything they want to say, now is the time from the board. Um, I do want to just address some of the comments. Um, I understand the community loud and clear. You want more time. Um, this is in front of the board tonight. Uh, it's an as of right project. Unfortunately, do I wish the applicant met with the community groups? Of course, um, we, we always encourage that. Uh, we have no legal standing to make them do it. Um, they chose to come in front of us tonight with this application. We are under an obligation to hear it. Um, so with that being said, uh, this is what is in front of us tonight. Um, Santo, do you have anything you want to add? So chairman, met a lot of new residents tonight. That's always a good thing. Uh, to my board, I won't lecture you guys. You guys all know the oath that you swore, the duty that you have. We go through this. We sit here every two weeks. We start at 5.30. It's already 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, we're putting in at least 10 to 12 hours a month listening to various applications all over the city. Uh, you guys serve, you all attend every meeting. Uh, I see every one of you every two weeks. This is a very hardworking board. I know that all of you are looking at all of the things submitted, put up on the portal and that you volunteer, you are not paid to be here, and I commend you for your service. Uh, we have a duty under the oath that we have taken to administer the MLUL in accordance with the law here in New Jersey. To the public, the Colgate Redevelopment Plan controls development of this site. 
As this board is well aware, this board does not enact zoning ordinances. This board does not have the ability to change zoning ordinances. This board is instrumental in making recommendations and reviewing them as is city planning. But the elected officials make those decisions. And the duty and job of this board is to weigh the criteria under the law when deviations are sought. When deviations are not sought, it gets a lot harder to say no. Uh, it gets a lot harder to decide what you can discuss and not discuss. So this board is well aware of its duty. I know that every one of you have taken the time to review the application, listen to all the testimony, weigh the testimony. And, uh, you know, I commend you for doing the hard work and doing what is necessary uh, to come to the decisions that you come to. So Chairman, I'm here to guide the board as always, but I know that this board under your leadership has the intellect and understanding of the law and their duty. And I know that this board puts in the time and effort and to everybody, the notices were sent in accordance with the law. That's what the law requires. I urge everybody to reach out to their state legislative officials and talk about why things aren't posted on websites and why we're still sending certified mail in 2020 or 2022. That's the law. That's the reality. I don't think Mr. Garcia and his client wanted to send certified mail to green cards, but that's what the law says you have to do. That's what he did. According to the list provided by the tax assessor, that's where it went. And that is what is required. The statute tells you, you got to mail it 10 days before the meeting. The applications were on file. They were available. And that is what's required by the law. So I understand the community's comments. I know the board understands those comments. And chairman, if any of my comments uh, are directed towards the board in terms of the board understanding its role, understanding the MLUL and being guided accordingly. I know that the board knows that and is going to discharge their duties in accordance with their oaths. But I think it's important that the public understand that that is what this body does and what this body is going to do. And with that chairman, I think we should hear from Matt Ward, our planner, uh, because I think that will help the board. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll give I, um, the I, one uh, more opportunity. If they wish no, to uh, deliberate, I hear Commissioner Torres. Yeah, I would like to uh, weigh in on this for a second. Um, and all my years being a part of this board and uh, and for council was, but he breaks it down very simple of our duties. Right, we are here to go by the laws of the ULA. Um. When something comes up as a right to us, or when anything comes up, this board. Um, so, and when sometimes when they come to the community, they get to the community. The people in the community know about it, and we're just getting it two weeks before, and we have to look at this information and get it and, and get no and 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 study the information so we can put a put on this information that we are, we are being presented. Then it comes up a whole new list of stuff in two more weeks. A couple of days, I would have another agenda in front of me. What I would like to say is that um, I thank all the people for coming out, but um, this is not over. You still, we are gonna, I'm gonna vote on this, on a project. You still have your council people, you still have your city people, you have officials that you could talk to, or the community you could talk to, and things can still be changed. As things on this project right now, I mean, yes, I didn't like, like but it can be changed by um, talking to some, your council people. It's gonna go to that next final here, and um, 
you got to remember that, you know, the community, the community state in like, if it was, whatever I say today is done and this is over with, sometimes it's not a true statement. There is nothing to be done. And, um, and, you know, there is a thing of trying to get these things forward. Um, there's two parcels left at that section of Jersey City, but there's a lot more in the waterfront that's going to be up to in the field. So with that, I just want to state that um, this is not the last straw. Um, when an application comes to us, and we see it all the time, sometimes our hands are very tied as a right. And I, I just want to. Uh, clear that up for myself too. Um, in my head, that this is much moving forward um, in these type of situations. Thank you for your thank you for this time. All right, thank you, Eddie. We appreciate it. All right, if there's nobody else, uh, I'll go to Matt. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. I'm just going to start with uh, just. Uh, just a couple of recaps. So traffic control for the buildings going to be addressed. Um, I did have a question. Uh, the I heard testimony regarding 24-hour uh, public access to the public spaces at uh, 55 Hudson, but I did not hear the same testimony given for 50. I just wanted to confirm uh, if the entire public plaza will be open public for 24 hours a day. Matt, if you give me a second, I'll get the answer for you. All right. Uh, you can interrupt me when you get that answer. I'll just I'll just continue. Uh, so uh, just to, in response to some of the comments that were made, uh, so I'll just kind of recap uh, where I have uh, the information uh, readily available for myself. Um, There's questions about parking. Uh, and the impact of these buildings on the parking, uh, Paul's Hook is in zone three. Uh, and to my knowledge, uh, after reviewing the maps of the parking zones, Hudson Street is actually not in that zone. Uh, uh, but uh, the, some of the side streets are, so I can look into that further as to whether or not these buildings would have access to zone three parking. Um, the There were some questions about um, 50 Hudson being an office building um, and it not being possible to be a residential building. The zoning uh, for that site has been in place since 2006 um, with the same FAR and height uh, that is proposed to here tonight as uh, and they are coming in under the uh, max density allowed on that site. Um, there is obviously another phase of the coal K redevelopment plan, uh, the coal K what I'll call the Colgate Clock Park or Park to Be. Um, that uh, that parcel the city has been trying to unlock. I'm not going to purport to know every last in and out, uh, but that site is owned. Uh, a small portion is owned by the city, very small portion, uh, but the majority of it is owned by the New Jersey Department of Military and Veteran Affairs. And uh, that's been the difficulty in trying to unlock uh, that site for uh, public purpose. Uh, regarding um, the mix of units, uh, we heard a lot of comments about um, overstraining the public schools um, and potentially having a mix that's too heavy on the studios and one bedrooms. Uh, I would say that the studios and one bedrooms are certainly helping drive down um, any exacerbation that this building or any other building uh, that is going up in Jersey City uh, adds to um, uh, to to our school infrastructure. Uh, it being uh, majority studios and ones certainly helps. Um, and uh, they are in under their density and even under their FAR. So presumably they could add additional height uh, and additional units. Uh, or additional bulk, rather. Um, I think that's all I had uh, as far as information that I could uh, respond to. Um, going now to some of the memos that the city prepared. 
there was memos prepared for both of these applications um, by city planning, by JCMUA, by Jersey City Engineering. Uh, I would ask if the council for the applicant has reviewed these memos and if they uh, will uh, comply with with the with those recommendations and conditions. Uh, Matt, two things. Uh, it, it is 24 hour access for both, I believe, was the answer. And I believe my engineers have testified that they will comply with the JCMUA and engineering uh, requirements and the planning requirements have also been reviewed by my client and are acceptable. So as it relates to 50 and 55. Um, I don't know if I have any other uh, or uh, any further testimony. If there are questions um, from the, the board, uh, I'll be happy to field. Thank you, Matt. And uh, council, I also do want to note the um, addition of uh, the exit alarms on the uh, parking garages as part that, of the that'll be that'll be fine as a condition chairman okay. <clears throat> thank you um yeah matt i have no questions for you uh anybody else from the board if they want to address matt if they want to ask anything of matt uh now's the time chair seated there is no public uh, there is no comment from the board i would like to make a motion to approve case p 22-107 as presented to the board this evening, together with staff recommendation and the additional um, condition on the alert for the pedestrian. Second. Okay, so <clears throat> motion and a second for P22-107 is for 50 Hudson Street. Okay, uh, Commissioner Gonzalez has recused, um, acting vice chair Gengadon. So I want to say thank you to the public and the councilman for your comments this evening. We truly appreciate your feedback as, as usual. As the chair and our attorney stated earlier, we cannot mandate community engagement, but I would encourage that you work with the developer closely going forward. Uh, we were presented with a complete application this evening with no variances. This project meets the goals and objectives of the Colgate Redevelopment Plan and the City Master Plan. This is a great. This was a great presentation. Thank you so much to the team. Beautifully designed, and again, no variance required. We appreciate the history that was presented to us this evening as well, and I am excited and can't wait to see the completion of this site. I vote aye. Uh, Commissioner Cruz. I vote aye. Commissioner Torres. Um, I just want to say that, you know, there is still the community. Thanks for coming out. I mean, it was overwhelming. Uh, in all the years I've been on the board, I was always uh, certain community groups, and Lewis Hook is one of them that they come out and they're very knowledgeable. It's good to see you. Oh, uh, we have a as a light project and um, strongly recommend that um, we still talk to the council and other people and the developer, reach out to them and uh, work on these changes as this project moves forward. As it get built overnight and um, there's still time. So with that, I'm gonna vote aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Yeah, I also echo the sentiment of uh, community input. And I suspect that those who were looking for postponement are disappointed. But I would say that in hearing uh, both uh, Mr. Mules, uh, Mr. Collings, and other testimony, um, there has been a substantial amount of community input. And hearing uh, and uh, carefully, Council Lampy. What our charges? I mean, this is, and Councilman Gilmore hit it right on the head, and he put it honestly as a start of conversation. I thought it was uh, fair and uh, very representative that uh, the word as of right. So, if we were to ask that this be postponed, uh, there's nothing, I mean, a conversation should ensue. So, it, I would say is, is, I've worked with Mr. Garcia in the past on, when I was on the planning board. 
when I was a chairman of the redevelopment agency and a councilman. Uh, he is very accessible. He's on record now saying that he will meet with the community. I uh, would ask George that a meeting with the community be open to the uh, positive comments that can not only enhance the project, but enhance uh, the community. So I vote aye. Uh, Commissioner Dr. Desai. Uh, they said uh, they started the project in 1980 when I moved to Jersey City and I know how many people used to live in Jersey City. There is essentially so much growth in Jersey City, but uh, people who came out and they raised their issues about the school, talk with your councilman, you know, talk with your mayor, talk with your board of education. You cannot just stop two buildings coming up for school and everything. So this is a beautiful project. And I think it's giving access to all the public people on the public plaza and on the waterfront. It's developing so well. I'm going to vote I for that. Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green. Not seeing Commissioner Green. Chairman Langston. Um, yeah, I'm going to echo my other commissioners tonight. Um, like I said in our deliberation, um, you know, we're tasked with this application tonight. Uh, it's an as of right application. Um, Again, I, I wish the developer met with the community first, um, but you know, a lot of the things discussed tonight um, are outside of our charge under the state MLUL. Uh, we have no control over schools, um, and you know, we can only work within our bounds. Uh, so again, this is an as of right application. The applicant has complied with every bit of the zoning that's in place that was set forth by city council. And uh, that's what we vote on. And my vote is aye tonight. Uh, on a motion to approve with conditions, um, both and including those put on the record, uh, motion carries with six uh, in favor, one recusal and one absent. Chair, at this time, I would like to make a motion to approve case P22-108 as presented to the board this evening, together with staff recommendation. Second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval with conditions uh, for P22-108, which is 55 Hudson Street. Uh, seeing Commissioner Gonzalez as recused, uh, Acting Vice Chair Gangadin. My comments on case P22107 is the same for case P22108, so I vote aye. Commissioner Cruz? I vote aye. Commissioner Torres? Commissioner Torres, I couldn't hear your vote. Muted. I put it on mute. Uh, your vote, sir? I too, my comments are the same as the previous, and I just want to reflect on one thing that the, the chairman has said that when it comes to schools, it's a, you know, forward that you go to and talk about, not here. Um, so with that, I on this part, I vote aye. Commissioner Lipsky? Aye. Commissioner Dr. Desai? Aye. Commissioner Green, are you there? Seeing no Commissioner Green, Chairman Langston? Oh, you're muted as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to echo my comments on the previous application, P22-107 for the record. And uh, my vote is aye tonight for an as of right application. Uh, motion carries uh, with six in favor, one recusal, and one absent.
Okay, thank you, Matt. We appreciate it. Thank you, commissioners. Have a great evening. Thank you very much for all your time. Okay, so Matt, at this time, or Cam at this time, uh, time being 10.22, uh, let's go down the agenda. That will be the last application we heard tonight as per our rules. Uh, so where do we want to start? I'll promote Jennifer. Chairman, should we bring them all up and we can cycle through? Sure, let's uh, let's bring everybody up and uh, it's just Jennifer and I want. Chuck. Okay, it is right. Yeah, that's all that's left. It's actually uh, Tom Lean has his hand up there. I gotta get on the German. Yeah. All right, Tom. Yeah, good evening, commissioners. Uh, I would request that uh, my two matters uh, be adjourned uh, with preservation of notice uh, until October 11th. Okay, and your two items, uh, you're not listed on them. That's uh, P22-057 and P22. They're actually, they're listed under the same case number, but one is a major subdivision and the other is a site plan. And yes, it's P22-057. Okay, so we are gonna carry uh, the two uh, different applications under P22-057. Uh, council, I can't speak for planning staff at this point. Um, I'll put you down for our October 11th meeting, but um, that'll have to be worked out with them. I, I can't get that tonight, but... Um, so we'll we, carry that one with uh, preservation of notice. And if you receive notice or you that application or uh, the other one under the same case number, uh, you will not receive new notice. This is your notice. Yeah, and just by way of reminder, um, Chairman, the next meeting, um, Mr. Vinny Lapaglio is gonna be uh, filling in because of uh, our council has to recuse. So well, we will be following up with some of these applicants just to talk, talk about that because we want to make sure that we hit uh, or we uh, hear items that uh, we have uh, those kind of logistic issues on. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Matt. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks. And uh, Mr. Harrington, I see you're still with us. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. So I'd like to carry uh, my item for 195 Bay Street to... October 11th with preservation of notices with the understanding of what you just mentioned and, and Mr. Ward mentioned. All right, thank you, Council, we appreciate it. So uh, we'll be carrying case P22-03 for 195 Bay Street to a date uh, certain right now of uh, October 11th um, with preservation of notice. Uh, so if you receive notice for that application and you're still in the audience tonight, uh, this is your notice. Uh, keep an eye on those agendas and uh, they're always up on the portal and uh, we'll see if uh, that does come to fruition. So that being said, uh, I think we've addressed everything up to memorialization of resolutions. Um, so I'm going to bring up resolutions real quick. And bear with me, uh, there's a few emails involved in these resolutions. Chairman, can I come back in? Are you allowing me? Doc, we would love to have you back in. <laughs> we miss you. Come back in. Don't <laughs> say that. Just come back yeah. in. We miss you. Thank you. I was gone. <laughs> so, so you I were eating we... ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was and had some ice cream and came back. <laughs> I believe we have 12 resolutions tonight that we're memorializing. So I'll start with uh, number one is the resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City in the matter of TFJ, Jersey City, LLC, 80 and 112, Thomas McGovern Drive, block 21506, lots three and four. Uh, that case number is P21-020. 
Uh, this was decided on August 23rd, 2022. It was a court remand to the planning board, docket number L3126-21. The second resolution is a resolution of the city of Jersey City Planning Board, uh, the applicant being T.A. Pool LLC for an approval application for a one-year extension of 30 Riverview Court, Jersey City, New Jersey, block number 7302, lots 33, 34, 44, 45, 46, and 58. That case number is P22-138. I have a resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City for the applicant D. Patel for a preliminary and final major site plan approval with C deviations, uh, the address being 14 to 18 Van Ripen Ave, Jersey City, New Jersey, block number 7903, lots 32, 33, and 34. That case number was P22-105. Uh, number four is the resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City recommending the block 11606 study area to be designated as an area in need of redevelopment, a non-condemnation area without the powers of eminent domain. Uh, number five is a resolution of the Division of Planning in the City of Jersey City. Applicant is Joanne Batya for final major site plan approval at 54 Cottage Street, Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, 07306, block number 7902, lot 58. Uh, that case number was P22-021. Item six is a resolution of the Jersey City Planning Board for case number P22-050. It's a minor site plan in the matter of the application of Vimal Patel and Kantabin Patel uh, at 789 Westside Avenue. Block 14705, lot 11. Um, number seven is a resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City approving a site plan extension of the preliminary and final major site plan approval with deviations and conditions. Uh, the applicant is Gopalji LLC. Um, I'm not even attempt to say this one, uh, D, D, S, R, D, LLC for an approval of a one-year site plan extension of the previously approved preliminary and final major site plan with deviations and conditions. Uh, that property is at 20, I'm sorry, 248 to 250 Academy Street, block 12204, lots one and 30. That case number was P22-096. I have a resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City approving an administrative amendment to the preliminary and final major site plan with deviations and conditions, applicant being TRG Summit LLC and Summit and SIP LLC for an administrative amendment to preliminary and final major site plan. That property is at 415 to 435 Summit Avenue. Block number is 10704. Lots two and six, that case number is P22-120. Item nine is a resolution of the Jersey City Planning Board for review and discussion of the report concerning the determination of block 11401, lot 25 as an area in need of redevelopment. That case number is P22-132. Item 10 is a resolution of the Planning Board of the City of Jersey City, case number P21-060. Uh, the applicant is John Nurima for a minor site plan with C variances at 26 Perrine Ave, lot 49 of block 10803. Uh, if you'll indulge me for one second, I do have to switch to another email. Okay, I have a resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City approving preliminary and final major site plan. Applicant is 50 Hudson Street LLC for preliminary and final major site plan approval. Property is 50 Hudson Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, block 14502, lot 13. That case number is P22-107. 
and the final resolution tonight is uh, a resolution of the planning board of the city of Jersey City approving preliminary and final major site plan applicant is 55 Hudson Street LLC for preliminary and final major site plan approval property is 55 Hudson Street Jersey City New Jersey block number 14505 block one that case number is P22-108 and at this time I will entertain a motion to Motion to approve the resolution. No, second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I don't know if the motion is finished. Whoa, I mean, I think by Lord Chairman, right? He, she What's has that? To, I think. Second it. But, well, second watch. She didn't finish speaking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your call, Chairman. <laughs> um, you better finish reading the motion, and then Dave does what he does. Vidya, do you want to read the motion again? <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to approve the resolution that was read in the record into the record by the chair. Second it. Thank you, David. All right. Uh, could I have a roll call, please? Okay. Um, before I do that, but isn't there some technicality with Dr. Gonzalez? Um, that's true. On yeah. The yeah, you can just you can you can oh, just okay. ask the code and um, that's yeah, why can... that's why I didn't read the the resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Commissioner Gangadin. Aye. Um, Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. So I vote in the affirmative for all resolutions read except for the last two, which were case P22 107 and case P22 108, in which case I'm abstaining from those two. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Thank you. Dr. Desai. Aye. Commissioner Lipsky. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. All right. I'm not. Uh, I'll see if Ms., uh, Commissioner Green is back. Commissioner Green. Aye. Okay. Um, Commissioner Cruz. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. All in favor. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, do we need an executive session? Anybody? Santo, you have anything? No. <laughs> Santo? Quick, with that soft voice. Sorry, that son, soft voice I, now. Good for you. <laughs> and, and, and a lot case, softer. I, I have a motion. I have a motion to uh, to end our meeting today. Motion. I'll second that. Second meet. I have a motion and a second. Our meeting is ended, and uh, I'll, thank you, everybody. I'll second that with two scoops of ice cream. Yep. And yeah, <laughs> Doctor Gonzalez, where is our ice cream? I didn't have ice cream. You can you can call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> nice. Um. All right, guys. Enjoy. Thank you. Nice.